A student named Daejin decides that he will take his own life. He begins to write a will where he explains what his school life has been like for him. He writes how he was brutally beaten on his birthday by a bully named Lee, how they crushed his birthday cake with their feet and forced him to eat the dirty cake. He writes how he was trampled on and tormented like a slave by Lee. Still, after being tortured every day, he returned to the school with no other option. His classmates knew about him being bullied, but rather than resenting it, they made fun of him for it. They called him a loser and provoked him by telling him to take his own life. He felt like he was being torn apart from the inside. He finishes writing the will by saying goodbye to his loved ones. Soon after, he takes his own life. The police get a report about the will from his parents, so they arrest Lee for being the murderer. He smiles thinking about it and then wonders how his family will take this. He believes that his genius elder brother would still be memorizing his studies while his sister would be on her phone. He thinks that his parents won't bother caring since he has a mediocre son. Even if his own family doesn't care for him, he wants to say his goodbyes and head back home for the last time. At the dinner table, he tries talking with his dad for the last time, but his dad doesn't care and only wants to watch the news. He also looks over and sees that a college student named May has been charged with seven murders of classmates. Ma tells the reporters that he doesn't think of himself as a murderer and that he only got rid of the monsters that turned his life into a living hell. He explains how he was bullied by these monsters and doesn't even consider them humans. Before being taken in by the police, Ma sends a message to all the bullied victims out there and tells them that they shouldn't end their lives because of some cruel people and should do whatever it takes, even if it means harming the bullies so that they can live. He agrees with May's words and begins to think about murdering his bully rather than taking his own life. But he doesn't want to become a murderer. He also doesn't want to be tortured at the same time, so he makes up his mind to take matters into his own hands. He plans to stab Lee and rehearses his technique all night. The next day at school, Lee begins to beat him up for no reason again. But Daejin doesn't have enough courage to fight back. He realizes that, like Pao Love's experiment where dogs were trained to get hungry just by the ring of a bell, he was also unintentionally trained to get frightened in front of Lee. Lee begins beating Daejin up again and takes him to a vacant area. He forces Daejin to finish a drink made of dirty socks and alcohol, but Daejin pukes it all up over and over until he passes out. Still, Lee isn't done with him and begins to pour alcohol into his mouth. Daejin realizes that if this goes on any longer, he will die. Surprisingly, he punches Lee and starts running for his life, but Lee catches up to him and starts punching him brutally again and again. Still, Lee isn't done with Daejin and begins dragging him to torture him again. Daejin notices a vehicle approaching them, so he finally gains enough courage to give one little push and make Lee crash into the vehicle. Lee's two lackeys see that he is dead, while Daejin begins to limp heavily in the opposite direction. He begins to feel guilty for doing such a horrid thing, but he has no other choice as this is the only way for his survival. Daejin returns to his room, hides inside his bedsheets and wonders if he should have turned himself in. He keeps telling himself that he did that out of self-defense, but deep down, he knows that he wanted revenge. The next day, Daejin went to school, thinking the cops were waiting to arrest him. But everything in the school is the same as before, and the only exception is that Lee is missing. Daejin realizes that he is not being suspected as the class teacher tells everyone that the police think Lee was caught in an accident while jaywalking. Daejin considers turning himself in, but wants to enjoy his long-deserved peace for a few days first. He finishes his classes without getting beaten up or cursed at. Lee's lackeys also don't bully Daejin and don't even suspect him. All the other victims of Lee seem to be more comfortable as well, so Daejin begins to think that maybe he has done a good thing by pushing Lee. He thinks that maybe God is rewarding him with peace since he has been through a lot of suffering. His misconception clears as a police car arrives at the school and asks for Daejin's presence. They arrest him on an attempted murder charge against Lee and show his family the evidence they found on a security camera of him pushing Lee. Everything starts becoming harsher and harsher for Daejin. From time to time, society reminds him of the grave crime he has committed. Soon after, the court finds Daejin guilty of attempted murder. But since they have also gathered evidence that Daejin was force-fed alcohol and found his letter that showed how much he was bullied, things work in his favor, and he only gets sentenced to probation for two years. Daejin then gets expelled from his school and hears backlash from the students on his way out. He even gets kicked out of his house, so he begins walking on the streets, drenched in heavy rain. However, this is not the end of his misery, as Lee's friends find him and start beating him up for trying to murder him. 
but this time Daejin fights back as he no longer wants to be treated like a bad egg. He picks up a brick and begins smashing it repeatedly on the thug's head until he loses consciousness and bleeds heavily. Daejin then looks at the other thugs to deal with them, realizing that taking others' freedom is the only way to retain his own freedom. Seeing Daejin turning into a maniac, the thugs pick up their own weapons and easily outnumber him. They again begin to beat him up brutally, constantly smashing his back and head with their weapons. But Daejin doesn't give up this time and shows that he still has some fight in him. A guy named Joe interrupts the thugs and tells them to leave, as he wants to eat here. He politely asks them to leave again, claiming the abandoned construction site to be his house. Of course the thugs don't believe him and threaten him. Joe fights back with his fierce techniques and begins knocking out one after another in mere seconds. With one last thug remaining, Joe thinks the fight should be fair, so he throws a chopstick at the thug and uses it to fight, but it was just a tactic to throw him off and super kick him instantly. Joe keeps torturing the thug, but Daejin finds it amusing and extremely refreshing. The thugs escape, and Daejin thanks Joe for saving him. He treats him to noodles for saving him and tells him about his pathetic life story. Upon hearing his story, Joe finds a liking for him. Daejin asks him if he can make him strong like him, but even if he wants to, he can't because he thinks Daejin is not fit for fighting. He thinks that he is a fragile little baby who can't handle such hard things. So if he wants to learn how to do things the hard way, he must learn to live the hard way. Daejin decides to learn the ways by being with Joe and secretly follows him everywhere he goes. He sees the homeless lifestyle of Joe and decides to copy his every move to become stronger. Daejin steals clothes from the trash, eats cat food, and sleeps in kindergarten park. Soon, Daejin realizes that Joe lives like a wild animal. Joe notices that he is being followed by Daejin. He tells Daejin that he will teach him how to fight if only he beats the thug behind them. Apparently, it's one of Daejin's bullies, Park, so it's the perfect opportunity for Daejin to begin his redemption arc. Daejin remembers when Park apologized to him for bullying him, but that was his twisted trap to hurt him again. Daejin clearly remembers the face of the bully, and that is the person who is standing right in front of him. Daejin despises the sight of Park and jumps right at him with a blazing kick. He thinks that the fight is over, but he should know better that, unlike him, the bullies aren't wimps. Park begins to destroy Daejin's face and tells him that he will pay for coming after him. Daejin sees a trash bag beside him, throws it at Park to make him temporarily blind, and attacks him again. But Park blocks it again and goes for a punch. Daejin tries to copy Joe's moves, but his movements are so sloppy that he fails completely. Park calls him out as a pathetic loser who can't even take revenge properly. Daejin sees Park's belittling gaze, which makes him mad. Park keeps punching him, and still Daejin blames everything that is going wrong in his life on the bullies. He wants to murder them all, but he doesn't have the capability to do so. Suddenly, Daejin remembers his conversation with Joe, where Joe told him to fight against Park. Daejin told him that if he could beat Park, he wouldn't need Joe's help in the first place. Joe explained that anyone can win in a street fight and gave him permission to do whatever it takes to beat Park. Remembering that, Daejin brings out his knife wrapped in paper and pokes Park, but it doesn't go through. Park believes that the knife is fake, but once he touches it, he realizes that it is the real deal. Park begins to tremble in fear, seeing that he is about to be murdered by a loser and freezes. Daejin kicks him and proceeds to come closer to deliver the finishing blow. But before he can, Park runs away for his life. Sadly, Park reaches a dead end and looks behind him to see that the psychopath is right behind him, ready to chop him up. Daejin uses the back of his knife to stomp on Park's head and aggressively starts to beat him up. Joe looks over at him like a proud dad and keeps watching. Park tries to think of a way to get rid of the knife from Daejin's hands, but he is too busy getting beaten up. Daejin hits him in the gut and breaks a rib, so he begs to stop it. But this is just the beginning. Daejin reminds Park of what he went through at school just because of him and tells him that he wants to die every day because of this endless pain. Remembering it, Daejin starts to cry, but Park shows no remorse and snatches the knife from him. He stabs Daejin with the knife to see that it is only a metal ruler. Joe, seeing Daejin's trick, becomes impressed, and it piques his interest in him. Park gets furious for being tricked and throws heavy blows one after another. Joe has seen enough and pours a cup of tea right onto him. Park, blindly in rage, comes to hit Joe, but they are not at the same level, because Joe hits him, knocks him out, and rescues Daejin. Since Daejin lost this fight, Joe tells him that he cannot teach him his ways of fighting. 
Daijin realizes what a fool he is and clenches his fist hard for losing the battle. Joe sees Daijin's determination to become strong and decides to give him one last chance to prove that he's worthy of being his apprentice. He warns him that this time, the challenge is going to be harder than before. Still, Daijin agrees, so Joe silently takes him to a new neighborhood where there are people worse than Daijin's school bullies. There, Joe tells Daijin that people in this neighborhood are so dangerous that the school doesn't even allow them to enter. He then teaches him an important lesson. Living in the streets comes with its dangers, and he will have to face people worse than the bullies from his school. These people are the most dangerous because they have nothing to lose. Now to answer Daijin's question as to why he was brought here, Joe throws Daijin inside a house telling him to survive here and locks him inside with some new punks before wishing him all the best. Daijin gets on his knees and tells the jacked, red-haired guy named Dayat Cha that, according to Joe, he needs to live here to learn how to fight. Cha and his friends seem to be acquainted with Joe, and Che gets a little mad learning that Joe just threw a kid here and left. But what's done is done, so he asks Daijin if he has any useful skills in him. Even after learning that Daijin is basically a useless bum, Cha can't give him out because of Joe. He decides to let Daijin stay for the night. He takes Daijin with him to his small laundry room, telling him to sleep there and reminding him that he will need to pay to live here, even if it is by doing some labor. Daijin doesn't look forward to the next day, as Che gives him the task of doing all the chores around the house, including silent cleaning, doing dishes, and cleaning the garden. But he is happy now that he has a roof over his head. Daijin settles in quickly and starts to look around the thug neighborhood as well. He sees thugs and delinquents everywhere and accidentally makes eye contact with one group. The big guy in the group named Ta accuses Daijin of looking at his girlfriend's legs and only promises to let it go if Daijin apologizes to him. Daijin knows that Ta is purposely picking a fight just to bully him, but then he remembers Joe's words, which told him to survive. Daijin doesn't apologize and prepares to fight the thug. But before things escalate any further, Cha appears out of nowhere and tells Ta not to mess with his lackey. He puts an end to this fight, telling Daijin to go back home and do the rest of his chores and warning him not to mess around anymore. Ta tries to fight back after getting insulted, but his own lackey reminds him that they cannot mess with Joe's crew. So Joe left Daijin at his friend's house. Anyway, Ta still doesn't care and brings out a knife to stab Cha. But Cha easily knocks him to the ground, disarming him. Daijin wonders if all of Joe's friends are that strong and silently returns to their place. Ta still can't get over the fact that he got beaten up that badly, and he takes an oath to take revenge and murder everyone in Joe's crew. A mysterious guy overhears him ranting about murdering Cha and offers to help him. A few days go by when, one night, Ta sneaks in front of Cha's house's front gate and begins to slowly release a deadly gas inside the house. Coincidentally, Daijin wakes up at the same moment to go to the bathroom when he smells the deadly gas, so he quickly opens the front gate and accidentally knocks Ta down alongside his gas cylinder. He gets caught red-handed and immediately runs away. Daijin's moves knocked out Cha, Kim, and the others somewhere else before he ran after Ta. He finally gets exhausted, and Daijin catches up to him, promising to be up a scumbag like him. A few days before the recent gas incident, Daijin and Cha were on the roof embracing the fresh air when Cha begged Daijin to stop following him everywhere. Since Daijin wanted him to teach him how to fight, he wasn't going anywhere. He told Cha that he also wants to take people out with one punch, just like him. So Cha handed him a jumping rope and told him that he could do a hundred thousand himself. That was too much stress, and I only said that to mess with him. But Daijin took it seriously and did jumping rope jack all day and night. Cha wondered if this guy was an actual nutjob and told him to go do his chores instead. Coming back to the present, Daijin is trading heavy blows with Ta. Daijin gets overwhelmed several times, but he remains persistent in capturing Ta. Ta knocks him away again and explains that he has already become a target of Joe's crew and needs to escape from this neighborhood immediately. It's just that Daijin doesn't let go of him and catches up to him. So Ta brings out his knife to end this once and for all. Daijin instinctively blocks the attacks with his arms, but there are only so many blows that he can endure. In the end, he gets cornered by Ta and gets stabbed. On the other side, Joe's crew wakes up feeling dizzy and wonders who could have done this to them. They can't find Cha anywhere, so they believe he was the one who saved them. Che realizes that Daijin went after the person responsible for this incident and tells his friends that Daijin will succeed in capturing the person. He remembers that after Daijin moved him away to a safe place, 
He made him promise to teach him how to fight if he brought back the guy responsible for the gas. Dajin grabs Tay's knife with his bare hands and begins to retaliate with all the might he has in him. Dajin goes beyond any madman will ever go, believes that he can fly, and pushes Ta off the edge and falls alongside him. Both Ta and Dajin come crashing to the ground, but it seems none of Dajin's bones have broken as he rises again to stop Ta. He picks up a rock to use it against Tai, but then he notices that Ta is already knocked out cold. Dajin begins to celebrate his first victory. He had never imagined before that he would ever win against a bully. But now things have truly started to change. He promises to take out all the delinquents out there, but then notices that his hand is covered in blood and sees that he has a knife stabbed into his gut. Dajin loses his consciousness and flops onto the ground beside Ta. He thought he had finally gotten proper revenge, but it was all for nothing. But thanks to his new family in this neighborhood, Dajin gets saved and wakes up in a hospital. Chet welcomes him back to reality, telling him that his wound is shallow and that he will be completely fine. He tells him that he only passed out because of the shock from the fall. He adds that when he found him passed out, Te was gone. So Cha believes that Dajin didn't win the fight against Ta, but he still decides to train him to become stronger since he saved him and his friend's lives. Cha's friend Kim finally talks with Dajin, commends him for jumping off the edge, and says that he expects no less from someone who Joe brought. Joe also arrives at the hospital and congratulates him on surviving. He also agrees to teach him how to fight and says if he wants to run, he better say it now. Dajin becomes full of determination and waits for the time to be discharged. A few days later, he gets to leave the hospital, and his new runaway family grants him another wish to show him how thankful they are to him. Dajin wishes for a pork barbecue party. While cooking the pork, Kim tells Dajin that he should have asked for something better. But Dajin loves pork more than anything in the world, so he is happy with his wish. Seeing Dajin eat so much, Che realizes that he has basically starved Dajin until now. They apologize to him for treating him like that and explain that it was hard for them to accept him since they are runaways like him. Dajin had no idea that it would be so hard to live outside and wonders why his life turned into such a mess. His runaway family tells him that it is not only him, every single one of them has their own sad story. Cha explains that some of them don't even have a family to begin with, so he and his friends know better than anyone how hard it is to live out here. Cha understands how lonely Dajin feels and assures him that he can stay with them if he wants. He then promises not to give him a hard time like before and welcomes him to live a new life with full freedom. Dajin finally chuckles for the first time in a long time and gladly agrees to stay with them. Soon after, Dajin's lifestyle begins to change. He gets his own shared room with everyone else, including Joe, and starts to get along with everyone in the runaway family. He learns that Cha and Hong are the same age as him, and the others are only a year or two older than him. He also learns that everyone has part-time jobs as an income source. Except for himself and his original runaway friend Joe, Joe slacks off and invites Dajin to do the same, claiming that nothing will happen since he is the leader here. But Cha kicks Dajin out, saying he can learn to fight all he wants after he learns to make money for himself. Joe gets up like an obeying child, starts doing his chores as well to save himself from Cha's ranting, and wishes Dajin good luck. Dajin walks around the neighborhood and finds a restaurant called Pizza Papa. He starts working there as a waiter. But after only two days of working, he decides to quit because of all the psychotic customers. But before he can, a hot girl enters the pizza place, claiming to be the owner's daughter. He is instantly crushed by her beauty and decides to give this job another shot. But little does he know that meeting this girl will change his life forever. On the other side, Joe keeps beating up all the gangs in the neighborhood to find the one responsible for the gas incident. Dajin starts bonding with his new crush, Nayun, and she also acts friendly towards him. She ignores all his screw-ups and mistakes so that he doesn't get fired. Dejin thinks that this is the best job ever, but he remembers that he must face the psychotic customers. One specific guy begins to smoke inside the restaurant, so Nayun requests him not to. The guy gets mad for no reason and tosses his drink at Nayun. Dejin tries to defend her, but his boss stops him, saying he shouldn't intervene and reminds him that the customer is always right. The father and the daughter both apologize to the madman before he leaves with a grin on his face. Later, Nayun explains to Dajin that there's a dangerous group in this neighborhood, but not everyone knows who they are. That's why normal people like Nayun and her father need to be careful around everyone to be in a safe spot. 
Nayeon's father also explains that he's helpless and needs to endure everything in this neighborhood to ensure his only daughter's future. Daejin realizes how hard it is to live here and becomes emotional. Days go by, and Joe finally decides to give Daejin his first lesson. Joe points out that Daejin needs to get rid of his fear when hitting someone. In order to do so, Joe plans to reshape Daejin completely. He makes Daejin work out until he runs out of energy for the next few days. He makes him do push-ups, squats, sit-ups, running, jumping jacks, and most importantly, a footwork exercise. Daejin is not so sure if he can use any of these to win a street fight. Joe explains that in a street fight, one must play dirty by using whatever they can around them. That is the only way to win, but Daejin wants to learn how to use his fists and punch like a professional boxer. Joe first checks if the previous training worked and sees that Daejin's dodging skills have extravagantly improved, and so he decides to teach him how to use his fists. A few days later, a gang leader named Jung beats up Ta when he learns that Joe is going around hunting everyone in search of Ta. Jung's lackeys want him to report this matter to the big boss, but that would make him the center of the issue since he was the one who told Ta to use gas on Joe's friends. Jung keeps torturing Ta even though he begs him to stop and decides to just destroy Joe's entire crew before the big boss learns about this. His lackeys begin their search for Joe in the neighborhood and see that their house is completely empty. So one of the lackeys then tells their crewmates to head to the pizza place to see if they can find anyone there. Meanwhile, Daejin comes to the pizza place to find his boss and Nayeon being thrashed by a goon. Nayeon whispers to Daejin to run away, but he wants to help her because he knows what a thoughtful and wonderful person she is. Unlike him, she is mature and will do anything to protect her family. So Daejin sees no other option but to save her dignity. The goon at the pizza place is called Taeyeon Kim, who is only 17 years old. He has never worked out before, hence his overwhelming weight of 242 pounds. Keeping the looks aside, this guy is all muscle underneath and only uses violence for communication. When he was in school, he was expelled for being too violent, but when he got outside, Jung made sure that he became one of his valuable pets. In his 17 years of life, he has never faced a tiny opponent like Daejin, so he considers him a small fry and tells him that he will die if he tries to go against him. But Daejin is not going anywhere, so Taeyang dashes towards him, thinking he can finish him with one blow. Daejin remembers what he learned from Joe and uses a chair to block Taeyang's movement. Taeyang begins to fumble, and Daejin uses this opportunity to finally use his fists. Back when Daejin first started training his fists, Joe taught him how to place his knees, hips, and shoulders to launch a perfect jab, and then taught him how to use the force of the feet to make the punch even stronger. He practiced and practiced and finally learned how to throw a perfect punch. Coming back to the present, Daejin perfectly punches Taeyang, which surprises Nayeon. She has always seen him as a friend who needs others' help, but he seems different today. Meanwhile, Joe tells Sha over the phone that he has taught Daejin how to throw a punch and tells him that he only wants to get stronger so that he can take his revenge on the bullies. That explains why Daejin has looked so confident recently. But Che remains concerned, as he knows that Daejin needs physical strength. His point is proved, as Taeyang is unharmed, because Daejin's perfect jab had no power. Taeyang counterattacks, but Daejin perfectly dodges every punch coming at him. He throws a few at Taeyang here and there, but that seems to have no effect on him whatsoever. In the end, Daejin gets cornered every other time and gets beaten up again. Nayeon tries to defend Daejin, but she gets smacked away. Taeyang then proceeds to choke Daejin, but then he remembers the second rule of street fighting and blinds him by spitting on his eye. He uses this opportunity to continuously throw jabs, but it's pointless. So Daejin uses a glass bottle as a weapon, giving him the upper hand and blindly beats up Taeyang even when he's knocked out. Nayeon calms Daejin down, but he has no time to rest as Jung's main two lackeys have arrived there. He pledges to fight all day long to protect his friends even when he can barely stand still. Kim comes there in time and takes matters into his own hands. Both Daejin and Nayeon are completely shocked to see how badass of a fighter Kim is and how good he looks with his man bun. Kim throws a punch, a kick, and a reverse kick to finish them off. He learns from the two lackeys that they were sent by Jung, the local boss, who works for the notorious gang organization called Haegwang. Kim explains that even the police gave up on this neighborhood because of the constant crimes caused by Haegwine. Haegwine is a youth runaway group that doesn't fear doing any crimes, and one of the victorious members of Haegwine is Jung. 
Kim theorizes that Jung is after Joe's crew because they think Joe is getting in the way of monopolizing this neighborhood. Still, Kim can't believe Jung would send his men to the pizza place where he comes regularly. The owner explains that Jung had his eyes on this place for a long time, but he could not do anything about it because he had seen what horrors he and the organization Hate Wang bring to people who go against him. And that's why the owner didn't want Kim to get involved in this. Nayeon begins shaking in fear, thinking that Hate Wang will come back with more force this time. So Daejin realizes that he must do something to get rid of these worthless scumbags. Che gets informed that Jung went after the pizza place and that Hate Wang is after them. He decides to come up with a plan and, in the meantime, tells Kim to lay low. Chan notices a nearby shop getting wrecked by the Hate Wang members for extortion. They proceed to raise their weapons against an elderly woman and her young grandson, so Che steps in and stops them from going any further. He beats all the Hate Wang members with no scratches on him, but Jung sneaks up on him, making him the first prey of Jung's hunt for Joe's crew. Ong learns about Hate Wang and wishes to run away from here. But Kim desperately wants to help the pizza place since he considers their pizza very delicious. The others jokingly agree with him and decide to help him defend the pizza place. Everyone gets an MEM mess of Cha captured and brutally beaten up and receives the location of the abandoned factory where he is. Everyone immediately heads there to get their precious friend back. Before the runaway family came to the abandoned factory to rescue Cha, Kim gave Daejin the option to leave, thinking that he would be an absolute liability and would hold them back. But Daejin comes there because he wants to help Cha. At the abandoned factory there are a total of 15 Hate Wang members, but there are only four of them. Well, only three of them, since Daejin is absolutely useless. Jung welcomes them by smacking and stepping on Cha right in front of them. Hong tells Jung to stop acting tough and mentions how ugly he looks. So Jung orders all his lackeys to shut them up. The fight begins while Daejin stands frozen solid. Kim and Seong show that they are on equal footing and easily fend off Jung's lackeys. Daejin comes in front of Hong, thinking that she is just a fragile, vulnerable little girl. But she proves him wrong by shoving him aside and using her flexibility to cover up her missing strength. Daejin realizes that all three of them are strong and calculates that they have already beaten half of Jung's lackeys. Jung has seen enough and comes to Kim with his metal bat. Meanwhile, Daejin struggles to even throw a punch at one of Jung's normal lackeys. He uses his surroundings to give him an upper hand, but he's too inexperienced and gets taken hostage by the lackey. He has proven himself to be an absolute liability. The fight stops for a moment, and Jung tells the runaway family to get on their knees if they want to see Daejin alive. But Kim doesn't surrender, and Daejin told him to leave him if he ends up being baggage. However, Daejin is still a maniac, so he doesn't care if a shard of glass is held at his throat and stops the glass with his bare hands. Kim becomes impressed and realizes that Daejin is the wildest and definitely the craziest one amongst them. Daejin defeats the lackey and tries to stop the blood flow from his wounds. The others, however, become shocked, seeing that Kim has single-handedly defeated Jung. With Jung on his knees, Kim begins his victory speech. But Jung stops him from going any further, as this is not the right moment. He tells him that he hasn't won yet and gets up to attack him again. While Jung is using his metal bat, Kim is barehanded, so it's not a fair battle to begin with. Kim just looks for one little space to launch a big move so that he can end this quickly. But Jung is one step ahead of him and uses his lackeys to catch Kim from behind. But before he can start beating him up, Daejin comes from behind and uses a wooden plank to hit Jung on the head. But that barely does any damage and makes him even more furious. Jung comes close to Daejin with his menacing aura and asks him if he really wants to die. Daejin realizes that he has never fought against someone so violent and can't get himself to move in fear. Jung doesn't waste any time and uses his bat on Daejin, making him gag. With one shot to the belly, Daejin falls to the ground, admitting defeat. Because of his little contribution, the runaway family gets enough time to beat all Jung's lackeys. The trio dashes towards Jung from three different sides, and with their amazing teamwork, they manage to neutralize Jung's movements for a brief moment. However, Jung is so strong that he frees himself, and no matter what he gets thrown at by the trio, he remains unharmed. Jung mocks the trio for being so weak, and offers them one last chance to give up and work under him. Hong asks in reply if he has hit his head or something, and tells him that she would rather die than be under someone so ugly. So Jung summons dozens of more lackeys and finally defeats Kim and his friends. Jung tells Kim that he is sending a person to his favorite pizza place to burn it to the ground. But before he can call that person, 
Daejin crawls up to him and bites into his leg. He can't bear to see Nayeon and her father suffer, so he bites as hard as he can and doesn't let go until Jung shoves him away using his nefarious bat. He then proceeds to call the arson guy who will burn the pizza place, but the guy who picks up the call is none other than Joe. He has already beaten up Jung for arson and will show no mercy for hurting his friends. Jung originally thought Joe had run away like a scaredy cat but seeing him right in front of him makes him greatly amused. Joe sees Kim and the others completely defeated and knocked down. He realizes that they must have been beaten up pretty badly, otherwise they wouldn't have gone down so easily. Joe sees Kim and explains that it has been a while since he has seen him in such a sorry state. Joe tells Jung that he won't be leaving here in one piece after doing what he did to his family. A brainless lackey attacks Joe, thinking that he is all bark and no bite, but Joe shows him that he is in a completely different league and provokes the others to attack him. But seeing Joe's skills, Jung's lackeys get too scared to attack him. So Jung puts a thousand dollar bounty on Joe's head, which makes them motivated again to attack him. Joe uses his Ultra Instinct Human Edition to defeat his opponents one by one and picks up anything he can find to use it as a weapon. Daejin can barely keep his eyes open, but he still gets amazed after seeing Joe's actual ability. Jung realizes that he is about to lose if things continue this way, so he threatens to break Kim's arm, but Joe doesn't care and keeps beating up the lackeys one after another. Kim explains to Jung that Joe is not the type of person to be swayed by mere threats, and if he were, he wouldn't have made it this far. So Jung breaks Kim's arm to make Joe regret his decision. But Joe doesn't regret his decision at all and keeps moving towards Jung. Jung remembers that his boss once told him that Joe was as strong as Hei Wang's leader and warned him not to get involved with him. He even told him to avoid Joe even if he gets in their way and to leave them alone. Even after the warning from Jung's boss, Jung, being Jung, messed with Joe. So now he must repent. Jung comes to attack Joe but he remains unbothered and defeats everyone else while dodging Gim's attacks. Joe tells him that he is no match for him and knocks him down with a few punches. But he is not done yet, and he tells Jung to get back up. Jung tries to use a surprise attack on him but gets his arm broken because of it. Joe tells Jung that he knows that he is behind the gas incident and what happened to Cha. He believes that getting rid of him will be best for everyone. Jung threatens to tell the big boss about Joe if he tries to harm him any further. But Joe is up for any challenge and begins to drag him towards the fire pit. Jung again remembers why his boss is so scared of Joe. It's because Joe doesn't end things easily if he defeats someone. And he sure proves Jung's boss right as he proceeds to shove Jung's head inside the fire pit. Jung screams and begs Joe to stop this atrocity, but Joe reminds him that he is the one who started it, so he should be the one to face the end as well. Joe tells him that because of him, all his friends would have died in the gas incident if Daejin hadn't woken up at the right moment. He tells Jung that he shouldn't have bothered messing with them if this was all he was made of. After giving Jung a second degree burn on his face, Joe finally releases him. Jung screams in extreme agony, but Joe shoves his feet on his mouth so that he shuts up. Daejin watches everything thoroughly and sees for the first time how terrifying Joe is. Joe goes to Cha and taps on his cheek softly to wake him up. But he is completely knocked out so Joe carries him on his back. He then looks over at Daejin with a big smile and tells him that they can go home now. Because of Joe's hyper carrier, the runaway family survives their fight against Hogwang and comes out victorious. But things are about to take a bad turn for Joe's crew as they start getting on bad terms with Hagwang. Cha, Daejin, Kim, Hong, and Seongbin get admitted to a hospital. But things get difficult financially and they fail to pay their bills as none of them can go to their jobs. The pizza place's owner comes to their rescue in gratitude and pays their hospital bills for them. Hate Wang began to stay low in the neighborhood, and rumors started spreading that Joe had taken down Jung. Daejin thinks everything is going to get resolved, but Joe clears up his misconception and tells everyone that Hate Wang will be back soon. He tells them that there are more people in Hate Wang who are even stronger than Jung. Joe believes that another member of Hate Wang will soon come to their neighborhood to take over the role of Jung. And he believes that when that time comes, Hei Wang will come after them first in order to take revenge. So Joe gives them two choices, to leave this neighborhood quietly so that they can avoid any further troubles, or to stay and brace themselves for what's coming soon. Che brings out the fact that Joe was the one who originally brought them to this neighborhood, so he wants him to choose their best option before telling him that they have nowhere else to go. Joe goes to the roof to refresh his thoughts, and Daejin follows him there. He asks if there's any way of getting stronger faster. But Joe thinks that he is learning fast enough already. 
Dajin explains that he has grown to become different from who he was before, but he still lacked everything and became a total liability. Dajin wants to be as strong as Joe or the others so that he can face Hatewine when they come. Still, Joe can't speed up his training as he is doing things as quickly as he can. But Dajin insists, so Joe thinks of a tougher but faster method, a special session that will make Dajin grow even stronger. Meanwhile, the pizza place becomes peaceful as they don't have to worry about hate Wang anymore. The owner doesn't know how long this temporary peace will last, but he can only hope for more time. Dajin returns to working there again and sees Nayun coming back from school. She, although terrified about something, doesn't show it to Dajin and smoothly asks him out on a date. Dajin agrees to go out with her without realizing that it's a date. They are supposed to meet up in front of the pizza place, but Nayan doesn't show up there, so Dejin goes in front of her school dressed up as a bad boy under Cha's influence and waits for her. He begins to feel strange being near a school again and remembers how he too was a student once. He feels like he is in a completely different world than them, but then he notices Nayan on the school grounds. Three guys have surrounded her, and the most handsome one among them proposes to her. The handsome guy gifts her a teddy bear, but she knows that there is a hidden camera inside, so she throws it away. The handsome guy reveals his actual sick character and starts getting his way with her. But Daejin comes there to teach him a lesson. The handsome yet despicable guy named Dong Ha mocks Daejin for uttering some filmy words. He pushes Daejin away and grabs Nayeon to take her away. Daejin's sucker punches him and makes him bleed out of his nose. So Dong Ha smacks down Daejin and shows that he deserves to be a bully. Daejin gets up and begins to provoke Dong Ha. Dong Ha decides to put an end to this fight as they are on the school grounds and getting unnecessary attention. But before he goes, he tells Daejin that he will remember his face and that they will soon meet again. Daejin and Nayeon forget about this encounter and enter a coffee shop to continue with their date. Daejin asks Nayeon if the guy harasses her all the time. He realizes that it's hard for her to talk about something like this. So he tells her his own story of being bullied at school and how he thought that he would cause people trouble if he told them about it. But now that he thinks about it, it would have been much better for him if he had told someone about it. He tells her that holding it in won't solve anything and that she will eventually explode. He promises to help her so that she doesn't end up in a miserable state like him. Seeing how supportive Daejin is, Nayeon bursts into tears and tells him about her story of being harassed. She and Donga were in the same class at the start of school and became friends, thinking he was a nice, charming kid. But one day he started acting strange and touched her buttocks. He immediately apologized, saying it was a mistake, but then he started crossing the line more often and in more clever ways. When Nayeon finally realized that something was wrong, it was too late, and she was already branded by the entire school as his plaything. Dongha made his classmates harass Nayeon, but none of them would admit that Dongha made them do it. She thought about asking for help, but since her dad was going through a hard time because of Heguang, she couldn't tell him that she was going through a similar situation at school. After hearing her story, Dejin can't believe that she was always in pain on the inside when she tried to act cheerful on the outside. He thanks Nayeon for today and promises her to teach Donga a lesson. Meanwhile, Donga is at a karaoke center trying to harass another one of his classmates. Her boyfriend comes to rescue her, but he is no match against the pro bully and gets beaten by him over and over. The girl begs Donga to stop, so he agrees only if she agrees to sing a song. She shakes in fear and begins to sing a song. Donga finds it hysterical, but he likes Nayeon much better. Donga reveals that he has found Daejin's entire life history and wonders how Nayeon met a bum like him. Donga wants Nayeon to suffer too, so he makes up a plan to use her sorry boyfriend to make her vulnerable, just like he did earlier with the other girl. To do so, Donga has already sent one of his lackeys to follow Daejin so that he can beat him up and use him to get Nayeon. But there's no need for that, as Daejin has found his way to Donga. He smashes one of his lackey's heads with a fire extinguisher and promises to do the same to him. He tells Donga that the guy who was following him earlier was seen by Joe. So of course he was beaten up by Joe, and that's how he found Donga's location. Donga sprays the fire extinguisher on Donga to block his eyesight and prepares to smack his head with it to take revenge for Nayeon. Moments before Daejin went to fight with Donga, Joe came to Daejin to tell him about his stalker. Daejin immediately realizes that this guy is Dongha's spy. He tells Joe that Dongha is a perverted boxer who has been harassing Nayeon. Joe decides to teach a special lesson to Daejin to make him stronger. He tells Daejin that the fastest way to grow stronger is to fight. 
So Dajin heads immediately to the club to teach his waifu's harasser a lesson. Dajin smacks Thong his right hand with a fire extinguisher, so that he can no longer attack with his fist. Before this attack, Dajin also sprayed him with the extinguisher, but Dongha blocked it with his hands. Dajin knows that Dongha is better skilled than him, so he needs to play dirty. He tries to distract him, but Dongha is way ahead of his petty tricks and starts pounding on him. Dajin tries to get his guard up, but he can't even lift his hands against Dongha. Dongha smashes Dajin's head with his fists and sends him flying to the ground. He tells Dajin that he intends to get his way by using him to blackmail Nayeon and thanks him for coming here himself. Dongha begins to have more perverted thoughts in his sick mind, so Dajin gets mad and lunges towards him. But Dongha overpowers him again. Dajin wonders why he can't even land a hit on this scumbag. He realizes that his skills are not strong enough, so he decides to give up fighting like a man and return to fighting dirty again. He opens the metal door to intervene in Dongha's attacks and damage his right hand. Dajin then comes at Dongha again to just land one hit. But then again, he gets knocked back again and again. Dongha tells him to stop trying, but Dajin knows he can beat him now that his right hand is completely unusable. But Dongha is confident that he can beat Dajin using only his left hand, so he comes pounding at him again and again. But this time, Dajin has his guards up and steps slowly forward while getting hit. Dongha realizes that Dajin is coming for his right hand, so he desperately tries to punch him away, but Dajin remains resilient and finally grabs Dongha. Dajin remembers the technique Joe taught him to use against a trained boxer like Dongha as the special lesson. So Dajin follows Joe's instructions and grabs the back of Dongha's head with his hands. Then he delivers a knee kick to the gut as hard as he can and then goes at him wherever he can, repeatedly. Dongha's rib bones begin to crack, so he tries desperately to get out of Dajin's hold and begins to step back. Dajin again remembers Joe's instructions and follows up with a kick right at Dongha's head. Dongha wonders why he cannot be a loser like Dajin. When he first learned how to box, everything went his way at school. Whatever he did, whoever he did, everything worked out for him in the end. But then, why not this time? Well, to simply put it, it's because Dajin's the main character. Dajin keeps punching Dongha and makes him admit defeat. Dongha begs for mercy and promises to never go near Na'an again. But that doesn't fool Dajin, as he has been a victim of bullies and knows that jerks like him make fake promises. Dajin remembers when he spared his bully once because he begged for mercy. But right after, that bully tried to attack him. So this time, he is not falling for that. He makes it clear to Dongha that if Nayan ever talks about him, he is dead. At that very moment, one of Dongha's friends sees Dajin beating him. So he slams Dajin on the ground and begins to choke him. Dongha gets up, grabs the extinguisher, and gets ready to murder Dajin. Joe comes out of nowhere, kicks Dongha away, and comes at Dongha's friend, swinging his elbow right at his face. Joe reveals to Dajin that he has been watching the fight all along to analyze everything so that he can give Dajin feedback afterwards. But he had to intervene as the fight wasn't fair anymore. Joe tells Dajin that he would have won if the Fatso didn't interfere and tells him that he did great with all of the techniques that he was taught. But Joe adds that there's one big problem with Dajin, and that is that he is too soft. The threats he made earlier don't work on savages like Dongha. And he kept coming back at him because he didn't end it then and there. So Joe tells Dajin that he should finish things from now on before the opponent comes and staggers him in the back. Joe then shows how to finish things and squeezes Dongha's future generation like lemons. Meanwhile, the girl and her boyfriend, who were being abused by Dongha before, wonder where her abuser went. She overhears a crying noise coming from the toilet and peeks to find that Dongha and his friends are half naked and being taught a lesson by the bully of the bullies, Joe Hangel. Joe films them in their miserable state and promises to upload this video if they ever trouble Nut on again. Dajin sees the girl peeking at them, so he tells her to quietly leave the place. He sees that she is carrying her knocked out boyfriend, so he realizes that she must have also been abused by Dongha. He realizes that Dongha is not only after Nangun but other girls too. He tells Dongha to never screw with anyone again. Two days later, Joe goes to the restaurant with Dejin and Nayan to eat pizza. Dejin learns from Nayan that Dongha has stopped harassing her and has become a guide who has lost all motivation in life. Nayan thanks Dejin for his help and becomes worried after seeing several cuts on his body. Joe likes being the third wheel and continues to enjoy watching them silently. Nayun tells Dejin to not worry about her school life anymore from now on, but Dejin reveals that he knows there are more harassers like Dongha. 
he tells her that when he beat Dongha, he searched through his phone to delete the schoolgirl's photos and found a group chat full of perverted jerks who have a common interest in harassing women. Nayeon finally tells the truth. There are a lot of bad guys in her school who are just like Dongha. She thinks this neighborhood has something to do with the rise of unscrupulous pigs like Dongha. Meanwhile, the girl from the club before gets forced to tell some other pigs from her school, Kang and Kong, about the guy who attacked Dongha. But she can't just give up the only righteous person who stood up against her abuser. She claims not to know him, but one of the bullies, Kong, is sure that she knows something. He begins to pull her hair to torture her, and innocent pedestrian Joe sees that and comes to put a stop to their vile act. Joe messes with them for a while until they raise their hands at him. He messes with them again and screams for help, and help comes dashing towards him. A flashback at the restaurant shows Joe figuring out that a few of Nayeon's harassers are probably hanging around in the neighborhood. So he proposes to use them for Daejin's fighting lesson, and Daejin comes to help Joe and gets ready to use all of Nayeon's school pigs as his punching bags. Kang swings his fists at Daejin, but he dodges them and counters them with his punch. The other guy, Kong, comes straight at Joe, but Joe makes it clear that he will not be fighting today and tells the guy to wait for his turn to fight with Daejin. Joe then looks at Daejin beating up Kang and sees that he is fighting better than before. He is dodging the attacks coming at him using his footwork and landing hits at the same time. Joe commends him for becoming the best out of all the losers in the world. Meanwhile, Daejin keeps smashing his new sandbag as he has figured out how to fight him. He doesn't know how much stronger he has become, but he can feel that his opponent is the weakest of everyone he has faced before. Joe also sees that things are getting too easy for Daejin, so he lets the other punk, Kong, go free and tells Daejin to take the two of them down at once. Daejin gets completely thrown off, as he never signed up for this, but he has no option as the two punks in front of him come at him at the same time. This time, Daejin gets overpowered too quickly and gets hit from everywhere. The two gains on him, and he cannot even land a punch at them, let alone win. The girl tells Joe to help Daejin, but he thinks Daejin doesn't need any help. Daejin comes up with a strategy to just go for Kang, ignoring Kong, but Joe thinks that this is the worst strategy, as Daejin will get beaten up eventually. But it seems that's the best strategy that Daejin can come up with. Daejin furiously smashes Kang unconscious before getting kicked away by Kong. Kong sees that Daejin has destroyed his friend, so he wants to take revenge, but his soul leaves his body as he sees Daejin holding a broken glass bottle. He slowly steps back in fear and accidentally falls to the ground by stumbling on a rock. Daejin conveniently stumbles on the same rock and falls face first on the ground too. Kong gets up to finally take advantage of his blunder. But Joe stops Kong midway and tells him to go home without making any noise. Knowing what a monster Joe is, Kong carries his friend, Kang, and slowly walks away. Joe sees that Daejin is still unconscious, so he carries him on his back and slowly walks back home. At home, Hong scolds Daejin for getting into a fight every day while treating his wounds. Joe asks Daejin how he is going to take revenge on his bullies if he can't even beat two people at once. Joe tells him that since bullies always stay in groups, Daejin must increase his skills if he wants to seek revenge. Some time later, in a park, four bullies forcefully take all the money from a nerd and begin to beat him up. Daejin and Joe find their way there, and Joe points at them, signaling Daejin to go take them all at once. A flashback shows Joe telling Daejin to take on a group of bullies, and as he doesn't have enough skills, she tells him to use any dirty moves considering it's a street fight. Joe even teaches Daejin more dirty techniques, promising him that using these techniques, he will win against any number of people. So that's why Daejin is here to take on four bullies at once. We get to see Daejin's training session on the rooftop of the house where Joe taught him how to use a hook. Joe mentioned that even if he learned it, he would still need to have his opponent in the correct position to knock them out. Joe then taught Daejin how to place a hook in the jaw of the opponent. Back to the present, Daejin follows Joe's instructions, goes up against the group of bullies, and immediately throws the first punch. The first bully comes crashing to the ground and gets knocked out. The others wonder what just happened. While they are still trying to figure out what's going on, Daejin goes to beat up another bully but fails to knock him down as he can't hit the jaw. The third bully comes from behind and knocks Daejin down, and the three of them start beating him up. They ask the nerd if Daejin is his friend, but learning that he doesn't even know him, they get confused. Meanwhile, Daejin remembers his sensei Joe's words again. Joe told him that it would be hard for him to win against a group even if he landed the first punch. He will need to take down at least half of them before they get ready to fight, and if there are more than three people left, 
The only way to fight them all at once doesn't exist. Not for a loser like Daejin. So the only option is to run away. And Daejin runs away. The three bullies come after him. So Daejin tries to block their path and makes one of them fall to the ground. Again, according to Joe's instructions, Daejin lures only one of them to get close to him and hits him with a strong hook. Then he begins to run again and even outruns the two bullies who are left. The two bullies decide to split up to find Daejin and the game of looking for prey begins. But Daejin is the predator here and he hits his first prey with another strong hook. This guy blocks the hook in the nick of time and immediately hits Daejin with a round kick. Daejin tries to fight back, but the guy's kicks are too strong for him to take and he falls to the ground. The guy stomps on Daejin and asks him why he is after them. But Daejin can't just say that he only wanted to practice his new skill. So he stays silent and keeps getting hit until the guy gives up and tells his friend to come there. Daejin remains resilient and begins to smash his face with the rock over and over. The other guy comes there to save him from Daejin. But seeing that Daejin has gone completely crazy, he becomes hesitant. The guy asks Daejin what his problem is and why he is after them, even though they did nothing to him. Daejin also wonders why, and then he sees a flashback to when his bully beat him for no reason too. So that's his excuse, just because. Daejin slowly limps forward and punches the guy's left hand with the rock. The guy realizes that Daejin is crazy. He begins to run away from him, but Daejin runs out of energy to run after him. But the guy is going nowhere as Joe trips him and asks him where Daejin is. The guy loses his temper for no reason and comes at Joe. He gets knocked out respectfully. Joe then goes to find Daejin and sees him limping his way. Joe asks Daejin why he let one of them get away even after he was taught how to fight a group. Daejin explains that he ran out of energy and struggled because one of the four was a lot stronger than the others. Joe laughs and congratulates Daejin for taking a gang of bullies alone, telling him that he is no longer a loser. Of course, he must mention that Daejin's strength still doesn't come even close to that of his other runaway family members, Dayap Sha or Kim Tak. Two days later, at a Nyan school named Jungren High School, two gangsters discuss the new punk that is going around beating up bullies at their school. One of them, Sayan, asks the other guy, Donjin, if Thanga was weak. Donjin doesn't want to go into the matters of the past and tells Sayan to find the guy who is beating up everyone before the reputation of Jungren School's bullies gets tarnished. Donjin tells Sayan that the guy they are looking for wears a hoodie and has a teammate who has a wolf style haircut. Of course, they are talking about Dejin and Joe. Donjin mentions that the guy in the hoodie always shows up whenever a bully is beating someone up. While talking, they begin to beat some school athletes for no reason and pick up a fight with a bulky guy named Jisoo. But Sahayan isn't scared of Jisoo and kicks him hard. Jisoo blocks his kick and gets the upper hand. Sahayan spits in his eyes to throw him off and kicks him in the face. Then he begins to strangle Jisoo with a pipe and smashes his head on the sink until he gets unconscious. That just shows what a monster Sahayan is and Donjin is reportedly even stronger than him. On the other side, Daejin goes on an unofficial date with Nayeon. Nayeon wants to go to karaoke, but on their way, Daejin sees a guy getting beaten up by some bullies. He wonders whether he should help them. He becomes selfish and thinks that he should spend his time with Nayeon rather than helping someone in need. But then he remembers the horrors he faced in the past because he was a victim of bullying. So he takes a temporary leave from Nayeon, making an excuse to go to the bathroom and goes to confront the bullies. But this was a trap, as the victim is Sayan in disguise, and he catches Daejin red-handed. Sayan attacks Daejin with a kick, and he realizes that Sayan must be here to get revenge for the bullies from Jungren High School. Sayan replies in the affirmative and tells Daejin that he will be punished for hurting his fellow bullies. Daejin gets ready to fight back, thinking he can take Sayan on as they have similar physiques. But he couldn't be more wrong. Sayan hits him so hard consecutively that his fists can't even reach him. Sayan mocks Daejin and tells him to land at least one hit. Daejin gets mad, but his tantrums get him nowhere as Sayan slams him on the ground and proceeds to pound him on the face. Daejin regrets coming to this alley in the first place and tries to think of a way to make an escape. He grabs some dirt off the ground and throws it at Sayan's face. Rather than running away, Daejin goes for a surprise kick, but Sayan blocks it and counters with a dirty low blow. Sayan can't imagine how a loser like Daejin went around beating up bullies. Thinking of it hurts his pride, so he begins to beat him again. Meanwhile, Nayeon wonders where Daejin went, so she follows his footsteps and finds him all beaten up in an alley, grinning his teeth. They go to a park. 
and Nayeon learns that after beating Dongha, Daejin went around fighting other bullies from Jungren High School. She asks Daejin why he always fights with nothing holding him back. She tells him that something is bound to happen if he keeps going this way and tells him to quit acting this way. But Daejin can't do that. He explains that he has lost everything because of the bullies from his last school. The kids who did that to him still looked like they were happy, like nothing had ever happened when he wanted to die. When Daejin thinks about that, he can't breathe and his mind goes blank. He doesn't have the confidence to live a normal life with that sense of defeat, so he fights to survive. Nayeon understands his feelings and tells him that he can do whatever he wants with his life. She tells him that she always wanted to stand up against the bullies and wants Daejin to punish those pigs on her behalf too. She tells him not to blame himself just because he lost and motivates him to become stronger. Nayeon wonders what his goal will be when he is done with his revenge arc. Daejin explains that he has never thought that far, so Nayeon jokingly tells him to take over her father's pizza place as it is running out of business. They have a good laugh about it, and Daejin thanks Nayeon for being so considerate towards him. Later, at the runaway home, Daejin tells everyone about the incident. Joe warns him not to fight when he is not around and tells him to be careful from now on. Daejin explains that he screwed up badly this time and reveals that Sahayan took a picture of him to make him a prime target of the bullies from Jungren High School. But there's no need to worry, as Cha and the runaway family are here to protect their little brother. But Joe forbids them to help Daejin and tells him that if he is truly a member of this family, he must prove it by taking on the whole school himself. Joe smirks menacingly and gives Daejin the new task of conquering Jungren High School. Daejin asks Joe if he is seriously asking him to take over an entire school. Seeing Daejin hesitant, Joe asks him if he is not desperate enough for his revenge on bullies. Joe explains that if Daejin takes over Nayeon's school, he can take revenge on the bullies from his own school whenever he wants, using his lackeys. Joe tells Daejin that it's high time for him to stop being a loser. Daejin agrees with Joe and decides to take over the school. The next day, Kang sees Daejin's photo in their group chat and shows it to Kong. Kang mocks Daejin for not being able to do anything in front of Sayan. Pong thinks that Daejin will never show his face again, as he is exposed now. Kong despises Joe for stepping in that night and claims to murder Daejin if he ever sees him again. Daejin appears out of nowhere and tells Kong to beak him if he can. He immediately punches Kong, followed by Kang, and asks them who is the leader of Jungren High School. A flashback shows Joe teaching Daejin how to take over a school. Joe tells Daejin that it's very simple, and he just needs to beat up the strongest kids at Jungren High if he wants to take over. So Daejin again asks Kang who the leader is and threatens to beat him up like last time. So Kang reveals that their leader is a person named Iltak, who rarely comes to school but is stronger than everyone else. Since Iltak doesn't come to school, Daejin asks Kang about the number two and number three ranked fighters. Kang reveals that Donjin and Sahayan are the second strongest members of their school. He explains that when Iltak isn't around, Sahayan and Donjin act as the leaders. After learning everything, Daejin takes Sahayan and Donjin's number and returns home. He knows he is nowhere close to being as strong as Sahayan, so he wonders if he should pick a fight with them. Joe comes to cheer him up and scolds him for being a scared loser again. Joe explains that if an opponent is not a professional athlete, a fight between kids is all the same. Joe thinks that Daejin has a chance at winning if he can overcome the length of Sion's arms and legs. Joe appoints Hong Gaeyong to teach Daejin how to become more flexible and attack a person with a longer reach. A few days later, Sion gets a text from an unknown number, sending him a picture of Kong and provoking him to come for a one-on-one -on -one fight. Sion heads for the location right away on his bike, realizing that it's from Daejin and waits for him to arrive. Sion realizes that Daejin is hiding here somewhere, so he gets mad again and starts beating around the bushes. Daejin ambushes him from behind, but he blocks it with his hand. Another flashback shows Hong teaching Daejin how to surprise attack someone and close the distance. Daejin uses the same move on Sion, grabbing his legs and tackling him hard on the ground. According to Hong, if Daejin climbs on top of Sion properly, all that's left is a one-sided beatdown. Daejin uses his smartphone to hit Sion, smacking him continuously. Meanwhile, Kang tells Sion's partner, Donjin, that Sion probably went after Daejin. Donjin sends his lackeys to find Sion as soon as possible. He also goes to look for Sion, not because he is worried for him, but because he wants to murder Daejin. Speaking of Daejin, he proves to be a loser once again as Sion almost rips off his mouth to get out of his grapple. 
Dajin realizes that he is dead, as ambushing was his only plan, so he tries to dodge Sion's attacks. But he can't avoid all of it. Sion provokes Dajin so that he blindly attacks him again, which he does. He tries the tackle that Hong taught him, but he should have known that the same trick doesn't work twice. Sion grabs Dajin's head this time and begins to choke him. Dajin gets the energy to deliver a cheap low blow and makes the same move that Sion did earlier to him. Joe watches the fight from a distance and commends Dajin for precisely copying Sion's moves. He remembers that Dajin once copied his own moves poorly not too long ago, so he is surprised that Dajin has learned Kakashi's copy Jutsu Sharingan. Moving on from that Naruto reference, Dajin again gets the upper hand over Sion and begins to beat him up. Sion asks him why he is doing this, as he and his friends were minding their own business. But Dajin knows that they harass women and bully kids, so he tells Sion to think about what he has done. Sion asks for forgiveness and grabs Dajin's leg. But he was distracting him to give Donjin enough time to crush Dajin with his bike. Joe comes to rescue Dajin and saves him from the crash. Joe tells Donjin not to interrupt as Dajin and Sion are fighting one on one. But Donjin doesn't care and he attacks Joe. Joe redirects Donjin to Dajin and runs away, telling Dajin to take on these two at once if he wants to take over the school. Donjin gets distracted seeing Joe get away, so Dajin uses this opportunity to come right at him with a strong hook. Dajin lands the hook directly on Donjin's chin, but that's not enough to knock out the number two of Jungren High. Donjin smashes Dajin's head with a kick and sends him crashing to the ground. He asks Dajin if he truly intends to fight them both alone. Seeing the condition that Sahayan is in, Donjin asks Dajin how he did that with his weak fists. Sahayan explains that he only damaged him because he let his guard down. Donjin then asks Dajin why he wants to take over the school and if he holds any grudges against them. He explains that he did so many things to so many people that he doesn't even know what this is about. Dajin accidentally reveals that he has seen their group chat and punches Donjin, but he doesn't even manage to make his face move with that weak punch. Donjin grabs Dajin's head and asks what he saw in the group chat. He knows that there are private pictures of women, so he asks Dajin if he likes those. Dajin loses it with that question and bites hard on Donjin's hand. He blocks and dodges the next few attacks from the two of them, but there's only so much a loser like him can do. He realizes that he will die in this way and wonders if Joe meant to not take over the school. Sion laughs as Dajin's only support leaves him running and tells him that he is dead. Dajin asks Sahayan if he usually goes around ganging up on other people, pretending to act tough, and adds that if he were in their place, he would be too embarrassed to open his mouth. Dajin lunges forward again to attack, but this time he dodges Sion's counterpunch and begins to run away from them. He wants to split up the two like the last time he faced a game of four members. But this time, he is not nearly fast enough to outrun Sion. Dajin remembers the uppercut move that Donhei used on him once, so he turns back to Sahayan and delivers the uppercut. Dajin then goes for Donjin, using Sahayan's back kick move, but Donjin blocks it. Donjin then trips Dajin over and begins to beat him up. Dajin runs away again to look for another similar chance, but before he can do so, Sion comes from behind and grabs him to turn him into a living punching bag. This was never a fair fight to begin with, so Dajin can't complain and silently gets beaten up. Dajin thinks it's unfair that they are so much stronger than him, so he decides to make it fair by dragging Donjin into the river to choke him underwater. They reach the river floor, and now it's a battle to see who can last longer underwater. Donjin pulls Dajin's hair with all his strength to let go, but Dajin just doesn't let go. He is so determined to defeat Donjin that he chokes him with all his strength. Back on land, Sion notices that his nose is broken from Dajin's uppercut and promises to murder him once Donjin drags him out of the river. But Dajin is the one who stands tall and comes out of the river to finish off Sion. With both Sion and Donjin defeated, Joe finally comes and praises Dajin. But it's not over yet, as there's still one more leader left at Jungren. Dajin must fight him too, just not today. Joe helps Dajin walk, and on their way, he sees all the lackeys of Donjin knocked unconscious. One of the lackeys reveals that Joe was the one who single-handedly beat all of them up to prevent any disturbance in the fight between Dajin and the two bullies. The lackey calls the leader, Il Takio, and hurry to tell him about everything. A few hours later, Sion and Donjin are lying beside the river, still in shock at what just happened to them. Il Tak finally reveals himself by showing up there, and he immediately kicks Sion for embarrassing him. 
He then promises to murder Daejin in front of everyone for challenging him and Jungren Hai. The next day on the streets, while Daejin is on his phone talking, two guys on bikes come to attack him. But Che intervenes in the nick of time and saves Daejin. Joe comes out of nowhere as well and takes down the thugs on the bike. Joe sees that these two punks are wearing Jungren High School uniforms, so it's clear that they are sent by their real leader. Daejin directly calls Iltak to challenge him in a one-on-one -on -one fight. Daejin tells Iltak that he will be taking over his school and tells him his name. Iltak tells Daejin to come alone to his place if he wants to fight him one-on-one. -on -one. But Daejin should know better that there's nothing fair in a street fight as Iltak is waiting for him with dozens of thugs with weapons. Well, Daejin is a moron so he really comes alone and asks Iltak's lackeys where he is. They have no need to answer his questions and they come straight at him to attack him. But Daejin is not actually a moron as he has his family with him too. The lackeys realize that Joe is dangerous as they have heard of him before. So they silently make a path for the runaway family and lead them straight to where Iltak is. Joe promises Iltak not to get involved in this fight and tells him to have a clean one-on-one -on -one fight with Daejin. Joe even provokes Iltak to make him agree to a one-on-one -on -one fight. Iltak decides to play along and gets ready to fight Daejin. Before the fight begins, Daejin asks Joe if he can beat him. Joe tells him that there's always a chance of winning in every fight and he just needs to capture the chance. Daejin gets motivated, but then he recognizes Iltak as he comes closer. He gets scared immediately as he sees Iltak's face and reveals that they have known each other for a long time. Apparently, Iltak is also one of Daejin's old bullies, so he gets even more motivated to take his revenge, even if he loses his life. Iltak also recognizes Daejin and tells him that he has heard of the story of him getting expelled after pushing Doyan. Iltak takes a closer look at Daejin and sees that he has changed. He promises to make him return to his old, scared face in no time. Daejin remembers the first time he saw Iltak. His body flinched as he saw Iltak beating some kids half to death while playing pool. All because those kids bumped into him. After learning that Daejin was Doyan's plaything, Iltak began harassing him every day and making him his human ashtray. He even beat up Daejin for bearing the cigarette burns and kept beating him until he broke completely. So to exact his revenge, Daejin must overcome his fears and take down one of his biggest enemies. He attacks Iltak but misses completely as Iltak smoothly dodges everything. Iltak can see that Daejin is scared, so he uses that against him to beat him up. But Daejin gains courage again and forces Iltak to step back. Iltak asks Daejin if he remembers the days of being his human ashtray while knocking him down with a kick. Iltak tells Daejin that he is still a loser and that nothing has changed. Han wants to intervene, thinking Daejin is out cold, but Che tells her to wait a little longer as he still has faith in him. Che remembers how Daejin trained wholeheartedly every day, non-stop, and saw the desperation in Daejin's eyes while he trained. Cha knows that Daejin wants this badly, and if they interfere, Daejin won't be able to excel at the next level. Daejin finally gets up again and grabs Iltak strongly. Iltak tries to get loose, but Daejin remains resilient and shoves him hard on the ground. He then tries to punch Iltak with his fists, but Iltak sends him flying away with a kick. Iltak then goes for another kick, but Daejin this time grabs his leg and makes him fall to the ground again. Both choke on each other at the same time. Iltak's lackeys think that he might lose against Daejin. Iltak gets embarrassed because of that, but then he gets annoyed as he sees the look of pure hatred on Daejin's face. So he twists Daejin's right hand to change his expression. Dajin remembers when Cha asked him if revenge was the most important thing to him. Cha tells him to just live a peaceful and comfortable life with his runaway family, but Dajin explains to him that he cannot, because he cannot forget his past of being bullied. When night falls, he can't stop thinking about the faces that harassed him. He tries to forget, but they always show up in his dreams or rather nightmares. Even when he is doing well, the helpless face he used to make when he was being bullied shows up out of nowhere, so he must seek revenge. That's why he is determined to endure everything to become strong enough. The gruesome training, the fighting lessons Joe asks him to do, and getting beaten by the pigs in the meantime. He can endure it all to exact his revenge. Daejin remains resilient once again and smashes his head against Iltak's head repeatedly. Iltak still remains conscious and goes on to try to snap Daejin's neck. The runaway family tries to intervene, but Joe and Chess stop them, still having confidence in Daejin. It's time for another flashback. Daejin was having a good old sparing session with Joe. 
but Joe had to ruin it with his mean comments. He told Daejin that he could predict all his moves and called him slow. He then reminded Daejin that he must get faster if he wants to get revenge. Daejin stepped on Joe's foot and came close enough to make Joe use both of his hands to stop him. Back to the present, Iltak tries to break Daejin's arm and makes it crack. Kim and Che want to stop this fight, but Joe is still confident that Daejin can win it. Iltak bends Daejin's arm to break it, but Daejin flips himself over by thrusting his legs upwards and gets on top of Iltak once again. Han commends Joe for being such a great mentor and teaching him tricks like this, but Joe reveals that he has never taught him this trick. Now that the tables have turned and Iltak has started to lose, his lackeys intervene in the fight. The runaway family also joins the fight and starts to beat up every single one of them. Iltak gets up and beats his lackey for attacking Daejin, telling them that he feels humiliated that they thought he was going to lose. He forbids everyone to move a muscle and steps towards Daejin again to end this fight. He commends Daejin for learning a few tricks, but promises that mere tricks won't work on him anymore. He kicks Daejin in the face, but he still stands still and begins to dodge his attacks. Daejin then lands a punch himself and comes for another punch. Iltak wonders how a loser like Daejin is holding his own against him. Iltak realizes that if things keep going like this, he will lose his lackey's respect. He notices that his lackeys are having doubts about him, so he blindly lunges towards Daejin. But Daejin counters his attack with his own and matches his speed. Kim asks Joe when he trained Daejin to fight like that. Joe doesn't take the credit, as he has only taught Daejin the basics of fighting, and tells Kim that Daejin is fighting like that with his instinct. Joe realizes that Daejin has a real talent for fighting, so he feels proud of him. Daejin looks for the winning moment and sees the chance that will get him the win. He twirls around, shocking everyone, and hits Iltak with a breathtaking punch. After taking that punch, Iltak still remains conscious barely. Daejin follows with another punch and a heavy uppercut to knock out Iltak and end this one versus one fight. Iltak's lackeys wonder what they should do and just decide to fight Daejin's team as they are outnumbered. Before they can attack, Joe comes forward and stops them, saying if they come any closer, Daejin is going to murder them all. Joe whispers to Daejin that he must act hard if he wants to become their leader. So Daejin brings his tough act up and tells them to come at him if they want to die. The lackeys get scared as their boss just got beaten up by the same guy, so they decide to retreat. Joe commends Daejin for his acting skills and tells him that they won't mess with him anymore. Joe then tells Daejin what he learned from the analysis of this fight. According to Joe, Daejin could only beat Iltak because Iltak remembered him as a loser from before. If he thought of him as his equal from the start, the chances of winning for Daejin wouldn't have been that high. Still, Daejin won fair and square, so Joe congratulates him on not being a loser anymore. After this event, the winds of change blew at Jungren High School. Iltak's defeat breaks apart the bully group, and after they loosen up, the female victims of the group chat report them to the police, and a large-scale school violence prevention committee gets established as a result. Dajin helps the committee by submitting all the data he received from the bullies as proof and gets most of the bullies transferred or, worse, expelled. Cyan, Donjin, and a few others get sent to Juvenile Hall, but Iltak disappears into thin air before getting his punishment. Still, in the end, Jungren High School finds peace, as all the bullies are now gone. Nayeon begins to smile in peace, as she doesn't need to suffer every day like before. Her father notices how happy she looks, so he promises to treat her even better. Everything worked out well, and the runaway family held a celebration party for Daejin's win. Che brings a celebration, but he begins to eat it all by himself. Kim makes some pork for Daejin, and they eat together and celebrate. Later at night, Daejin goes to the rooftop because he can't sleep. Joe also follows him there and asks him what the problem is. Daejin explains that this is the first time he has gotten revenge on someone who used to bully him. It was satisfying, but at the same time, he felt his life was still so unfair. He can no longer live a normal life with his family or go to school. So, no matter how much time he gets, things can't go back to how they were. Joe reminds him that his revenge arc is not over yet, so he should think about his other goals in the later seasons. Joe promises Daejin that he won't regret his runaway life and tells him that he will make sure that Daejin enjoys everything. Cha eavesdrops on their conversation and wonders about something. The next day, when Daejin gets ready to go to work, Cha tells him to stay, saying he has given him a day off. Cha then asks Daejin to follow him and takes the entire runaway family to have some fun. He takes everyone to a karaoke club where Hong sings her favorite songs. Then he plays video games with Daejin 
and afterward he goes to a bowling ball club where Songbin shows his talent. They have fun the entire day, and that makes Joe happy as well. Daejin finally begins to consider his runaway family as his real family, but then his father decides to show up in front of him after abandoning him for months. Daejin wonders what he should do and considers walking away. He remembers that when he was young, his dad was always strict towards him and beat him every day for not being a bright student. But his mom told him that his dad did it out of love, so he believed her and kept studying hard to live up to his dad's expectations. Daejin succeeded in getting good grades, but that wasn't enough to impress his dad. But the positive side was that his dad didn't beat him that day and has stopped beating him since. But now his dad finally slaps him. Daejin's dad tells him to come back home immediately and tells him that he's a total embarrassment. Daejin asks him why he wants his worthless, abandoned son to come back after not caring for him all these years and tells him to stop pretending to be a proper father now. His dad gets mad and starts slapping him for speaking in that manner, telling him that he doesn't need someone like him in his family. Joe stops his dad from abusing Daejin and politely asks Daejin's dad to leave. Daejin's dad realizes that Daejin is basically a thug, so he tells Daejin one more time to come back home before giving up on him. Daejin also doesn't need a father like him, so he lets him go and begins to cry as he no longer has a family. But Joe tells him that blood relations are not the only thing that makes a family. Understanding one another, Daejin also realizes that and begins to smile, as he has now found people who understand him and what he goes through. So he goes back to his runaway family, or rather, his real family. Daejin keeps training daily and gets bulky over time. Daejin's daily life with his runaway family also gets better as he starts getting involved in everything. Daejin becomes completely used to his new life and trains more, but he still can't land a hit on Joe. On the other side of the hospital, Daejin's original bully, Doyen, finally comes back from a coma. Doyen comes back from a coma, and the first thing he remembers is Daejin. Soon after, Doyen gets discharged and returns to his normal state. He gathers his fellow bully friends to take revenge on Daejin. But only two of them arrive, telling him that the others won't be coming as they got beaten up badly by Joe previously. The guy tells Doyen that everyone who got beaten up by Daejin wants to murder him just like Doyen. But they can't make a move because of the new school violence prevention committee. So he tells Doyen to take it slow and easy. But Doyen is blinded by revenge and wants to hurt Daejin right now. His friend wants no part in it and slightly pushes Doyen, making him fall to the ground. Doyen reveals that his leg is all messed up and he can't walk properly. But he still wants his revenge, so he leaves her alone to get it. Meanwhile, Daejin comes to Nayeon's school to give her an umbrella on behalf of her dad, as rain could start pouring soon. Joe also shows up there, as he wants a free pizza from Nayeon. They go together to eat, and Doyen secretly follows them while clenching his fists hard. A flashback shows Doyen learning everything that happened regarding Daejin while he was in a coma. Doyen still can't believe a loser like Daejin beat up Iltak, so he tries to call him for backup, but he doesn't answer. He keeps following Daejin on his own. Joe and Daejin get into a fight with some thugs who are beating up a middle-aged man. They smoothly defeat everyone, and seeing their fight, Doyen can't believe that Daejin can be so strong. The thugs run away, realizing that they are up against the hangled Joe family. Nayeon asks the injured man if he was okay, and Joe told him not to get into any arguments in this neighborhood. But the man reveals that the thugs came after him intentionally, as they first checked his ID before beating him up. Joe wonders if the Haegwain gang is coming back to this neighborhood again. Doyen realizes that he can't go up against Daejin in this state and trembles in fear after seeing how strong he is. Some random thugs see Doyen in the miserable state he is in and decide to mug him. Doyen tries to fight back, but he has no strength in him and gets beaten up in the end. The bully blames Doyen for dropping his ice cream, so he shoves it in his mouth to make him eat it. Doyen realizes that he has become a loser because of Daejin. Before his mouth reaches the dirty ice cream, Daejin and Joe come to his rescue, not knowing that he is the sick bastard who ruined Daejin's life. Even a full-fledged bully like Doyen has a past that he would like to erase from his life, the past when he was once obese, just because he was a bit chubby, Everyone in his age group made fun of Doyen, and he felt lonely. All the kids looked down on him and ridiculed him. Some of the bullies in making even humiliated Doyen every day, but he never screamed at them once and kept his gaze down. Until one day, he could not keep his anger in anymore and used his fist against his bullies. That's when he learned what it felt like to be the one looking down on someone else, which was amazing. 
After that incident, Doyen decided that he would never go back to being a pushover and became a bully himself. No one ever looked down on him after he became a bully until now. After Dejin and Joe beat up the thugs that bullied Doyen, thinking he was just a loser, Dejin comes to help Doyen and reaches his hand out, not knowing he is the main boss he wants to defeat to complete his revenge arc. However, Doyen feels humiliated as he doesn't want to be looked down on by anyone, let alone by Dejin, whom he considers to be at the bottom of the food chain. But Doyen is in no shape to pick up a fight, so he realizes that he needs to run away quietly. Because if Dejin figures out who he is, he is as good as dead. But Doyen can't even walk properly because of his weak legs. That's when Rain comes to his rescue, and Doyen limps away while Dejin and Joe wonder what is wrong with that weirdo. Doyen wonders if he is being followed and begins to feel miserable, so he decides to come back another day with more thugs to take his revenge on Dejin. Dejin sees that Doyen is soaking wet in the rain, so he comes to him with an umbrella. But Doyen quickly shakes him off because he can't let Dejin see his face, and he faintly tells Dejin to get lost. Although the voice was faint and mixed in with the sound of the rain, Dejin felt an unpleasantness coming from the voice. He just stands still, wondering why he feels so uneasy. Joe and Nayeon catch up with Dejin and return home while he still regrets letting the injured person go on his own. Meanwhile, Doyen feels miserable and slips on the ground while limping. He realizes that his legs might never get fixed and everyone will pity him, just like Dejin did. He also realizes that he will be ridiculed again by new bullies, just like he was when he was young and overweight. Doyen can't bear the thought of going back to that life, so he decides to commit the unthinkable and climbs off a bridge. On the other side, Joe tells Dejin that he has improved a lot in his fighting and decides to officially end teaching him private fighting lessons. Dejin gets tears in his eyes as he finally graduates from being a loser, so his runaway family cheers him up, and Joe even gifts him a present for graduating. This brings back memories for Kim as he remembers that he too once graduated by training from Joe. Dejin opens the present and wears it, seeing that it's the same jacket that Joe wears too. Now that he has become a runaway delinquent like Joe, all that is left for Dejin to do is to go to his old school to complete his revenge arc. The runaway family wishes to come along with Dejin, but Dejin tells them that it's personal and no one else needs to be involved. But Che makes Dejin understand that he is now a part of Hangul Joe's family, and the most important thing will always be family. Dejin laments how he was kicked out into the streets by his own family, but he's happy now that he has a family he can relate to, and that's why he no longer feels alone. He thanks everyone and picks a date to go back to school and start a new phase of his life. In the meantime, Doyen almost makes a jump to end it all, but he gets a phone call from Iltak right before. Doyen tells Iltak that he feels miserable because of Dajin and wants his revenge, but Iltak can't help much because he too has taken a good beating by Dajin and tells Doyen that Dajin is not a loser anymore. However, Iltak is planning to take revenge on Dajin and he reveals that he has joined the notorious gangster group named Hatewine. He tells Doyen that Hatewine members take contract assaults on anyone as long as you pay them. Iltak claims that if Doyen brings enough money, he will tear down Dajin into little pieces. But Doyen isn't happy with just beating Dajin. He feels that he must murder Dajin to escape the humiliation and live a good life again. Some thugs from Hatewine start pursuing a guy and look everywhere to find him. On the other side, Dajin feels a little carefree now that his fighting lessons are over and roams around the neighborhood to spend some time before his shift starts. The things he had been through were difficult, but Dajin feels that he was only able to withstand all of them thanks to the people who cheered him on, especially Nayeon, who encouraged him to take revenge, so he decides to meet up with her to thank her again. Dajin wants to get closer to Nayeon because he is in love with her, but he decides to wait until his revenge is over. But a sudden problem has arisen. According to what Joe told Dejin earlier, the Hatewine gang has returned to their neighborhood recently. Angel Joe's family was the reason behind Hatewine's retreat last time, and Joe is certain that they and the people around them will become targets of Hatewine. But because no one is willing to run away, Joe tells the runaway family to be careful, and if Hatewine messes with them again, the runaway family must show who they really are. Now that he is stronger, Dejin has to protect Nayeon, his boss at the pizza place, Aka, his future father-in-law, from Hagwang. But it seems Hagwang has already messed with Dajin's boss, because when Dajin enters the pizza place, he sees that his boss's right arm is fractured. Dajin demands to know who did this and promises to help him. 
so the boss reveals that he embarrassingly tripped and hurt himself while he was walking and tells Daejin that there's nothing for him to worry about. Daejin feels glad that it wasn't Haewang and goes inside to change into his uniform. Inside, he sees Nayeon back hugging the newest recruit, Seon Ho, to help him wear the apron. Mr. Handsome Seongo introduces himself to Daejin and reveals that he is younger than him. But Daejin has already started to hate him for getting special treatment from Nayeon. Still, Daejin shows Seon Ho the ropes and teaches him how to do the regular chores of the restaurant. But Seon Ho makes mistakes in everything, like washing dishes, and gets scoffed at by Daejin. Seon Ho even messes up while serving food to the customers, so Daejin starts smirking, as he wasn't as bad as Seon Ho when he started to work here. At the end of the shift, Nayeon comes to motivate Seon Ho as he is having a hard day and believes that he will one day become as good as Daejin in no time. After she leaves, Seon Ho offers Daejin to go out and smoke, and even though Daejin doesn't smoke, he goes out with him to try and look hard in front of Seon Ho. Daejin realizes that Seon Ho must be going through a hard time considering he is smoking at the age of 16. So he asks Seon Ho why he is working at this young age, and Seon Ho reveals that he is planning to run away from his home. Seon Ho can't explain and just tells Daejin that he has his reasons. Daejin, as a runaway kid, himself tells Seon Ho that running away isn't easy and getting freedom doesn't mean you are free. He explains that the streets are a dangerous place and no one can say for sure what is going to happen. So it's best that Seon Ho doesn't run away. But at the same time, Daejin knows that there are some situations that are beyond control since he has been through one himself, so he can't tell Seon Ho not to run away. While trying to fake smoking while holding the cigarette on the other side, Daejin advises Seon Ho to not run away if he can tolerate it, and after the small talk, Daejin goes on to teach everything to help Seon Ho get better at the restaurant. The next day, Seon Ho becomes a master at making pizzas thanks to Daejin's teaching, and cleans the dishes perfectly. He even serves the food to the customers and steals the attention of the ladies. So, Na Yun and her dad get super impressed, while Daejin realizes that he has made a great mistake. He knows that he shouldn't be jealous of Seon Ho, but it seems that both his job and his girlfriend are about to be snatched away by the young boy. Nayeon even pats Seong Ho's head for doing a great job today. Seeing that, Daejin can't take it anymore and runs away immediately, crying like a little girl. He thinks it's unfair that Seong Ho is so talented and wonders if Seong Ho will make Nayeon develop feelings for him. While he is sulking, the guy who was being chased down by Haewang runs into Daejin and asks him if he can help him hide somewhere. So Daejin helps in one hide inside an alley until the thugs from Haewang run in the other direction. Daejin asks in won why the thugs were chasing him, so he reveals that he is a member of a famous organization called the Hangul Joe family. in won even brags that Hangul Joe family crushes Jung from Haewang, and Joe himself took care of a hundred members of Haewang. Daejin figures out that this guy is just selling Hangul Joe family's name to make him look good in the neighborhood and realizes that Haewang must be chasing him, thinking he is a member of Hangul Joe family. But before Daejin can confront in won about this, the thugs from Hate Wang find them and come to beat them both. They go for In Wan first and then attack Daejin. So Daejin steps up to teach the thugs a lesson and tells In Wan to never steal Hangul Joe family's name again. One of the thugs in Hate Wang recognizes Daejin as the loser of Hangul Joe family, who got beaten up at the abandoned factory. They decide to murder him, thinking that he is the weakest member of Hangul Joe family. The thugs think that all the members of Hangul Joe family are losers, except Hangul Joe, who hyper-carries them through every trouble. The thug even recalls Kim and Hong baiting for their lives and mocks the runaway family for leeching on Joe. The thug goes on to mock Daejin, claiming to make him beg for his life, so Daejin lunges at him and throws a jab right at his jaw to shut him up. After knocking out the first thug, Daejin goes to beat the rest of the thugs for mocking his family. He dodges the two thugs' attacks and easily defeats both. Inwon confirms that Daejin must be a member of Hangul Joe family. Inwon realizes that he might have pissed Daejin off because of his lying earlier, so he decides to run away quickly. But Daejin stops him midway and tells him that he has figured out that the thugs from Haewang weren't chasing Inwon because of him being a member of Hangul Joe family. Because of what the thugs said, Daejin realized that they were trying to avoid Hangul Joe family. Daejin tells Inwon to tell him the truth this time, or he threatens to make him pay for impersonating his crew. Inwon reveals that he was a part of Haewang once, and they stabbed him in the back. He explains by telling Daejin more about Haewang, 
After Jung got beaten up by Joe, Hatewine disappeared from this neighborhood and changed their business methods. Before, they collected money from doing side businesses, but now they have started to take commissions instead for contract hits, including assaults, kidnappings, and threatenings. In one takes Daejin somewhere and shows him a middle-aged man, revealing that he was backstabbed because of him. Dajin recognizes the man as the person he saved once from Hate Wang and tells In Wan about it. In Wan clenches his teeth after learning that Hate Wang beat him and reveals to Dajin that the man is his father, who is also the district representative of this area. According to him, the man always forced him to study and acted so strict that he ran away from home and joined Hate Wang. He was happy with his runaway life at first, but reality shook him as he realized that Hate Wang members commit real crimes. When he came to this realization and decided to quit Hate Wang, he saw that someone had commissioned a hit on his dad. And soon enough, the thugs from Hate Wang found out that he was his son, so they held him hostage to threaten his dad. Seeing how the people who In Wan thought of as his family were turning their back on him, he stole the money that came in for his dad's commission and ran away. That is why Hate Wang is chasing after him. Daejin is more concerned about In Wan's father, as Hague Wang will go after him to get to his son. But In Wan doesn't care, as his relationship with his dad is over. His expression says otherwise, so Daejin tells him about his own situation and how, after running away, he found his own family who cares for him. So Daejin tells In Wan to risk his life for the people he cares for in order to protect them. Daejin reveals to In Wan that his father cares for him and was looking for him when Daejin found him. He requested that Daejin, if he ever ran into In Wan, tell In Wan that he was sorry. In Wan realizes that he made a mistake by running away from home and wants to get back to his father. Daejin finds it ironic that both In Wan and Seongo are going through hard times while both situations are the opposite. Daejin decides to help In Wan get back to his father because he doesn't want anyone else to be fatherless like him. Daejin even tells In Wan to come to the pizza place if he is hungry and tells him to stay safe. On the other side, Jung beats some thugs for firing him from Hate Wang, but his boss, Gangrak, stops him from throwing further tantrums. Gangrak tells Jung that he has caused a lot of damage to the entire Hate Wang organization for going against his words and messing with Hangul Jo family. That's the reason she was fired. But Jung keeps throwing tantrums because he is a dumb gangster. Gangrak knocks him out with one punch and tells his lackeys to get rid of him. An executive member of Hate Wang named Jungmin tells Gangrak that they have received a request to murder Hangul Jo family, and the client even promised to go to any lengths. So Jongmin proposes to do it, considering Hangul is their biggest enemy. But Gangrak opposes the idea of murdering Hangul Jo family, as he knows it would be a waste, and rather he wants to use them to his benefit. Gangrak tells Jongmin that he wants to use Daejin, as he reveals that he has already planted his spy on Daejin, and it's between Songho or Inwon. At the pizza place, Daejin introduces both of his new acquaintances to each other. The reason he wanted to introduce them to each other is because they are going through exactly the opposite situations, where one wants to be a runaway and the other wants to return to his family. In one learns that Sunanga wants to run away, so he tells him that there's nothing appealing about it and he will only suffer. In one advises Songho to join Hate Wang if he wants to run away badly, and Daejin opposes that idea. Seongho reconsiders his options and tells his backstory so that Daejin and Inwon can better understand his situation. Seongho's family used to be happy before his mom passed away in an accident. While his dad was in despair, he still tried to make him happy. His dad even remarried another woman to fill the void that his mom had left behind, and Seongho was happy once again. However, things became different once his stepmother gave birth to his little stepsister. Having a child of her own, his stepmother didn't need Seongho anymore and started abusing him any chance she could get. But Sinongo couldn't tell his dad about his sufferings as he saw how happy his dad looked with his new family. He doesn't want to ruin his dad's new life with his wife and daughter, which is why Sinongo wants to just run away. He believes that if he is gone, his stepmother will be happy again, and everyone will live happily ever after. Even after hearing the story, Daejin believes Songho's dad wouldn't want Songho to leave, so Daejin tells him not to leave. Also, Daejin thinks that Sinongho shouldn't sacrifice himself for the sake of his dad and should put himself first. Inwon also agrees to that and still offers Sinongho that if he ever runs away, he is willing to share a room together using the stolen money. Now coming to Inwon's situation, he doesn't know what he should do about his dad's situation. 
So Sano comes up with the idea to find the client and ask them to cancel their request since Inwon already knows their name. Daejin also steps up to help Inwon find the client, so Inwon asks Daejin why he is willing to help a stranger. Daejin explains that he already considers both his friends, and that's why he intends to help them. As night falls, Daejin takes his leave, so Inwon and Seondo tell Gangrak that Daejin has fallen for their trap. Gangrak instructs the two of them to keep observing Daejin and reveals that he intends to murder all Hangul Joe's family at the right moment. On the other side, Daejin asks the runaway family's help to save Inwon's dad. But Cha explains that they aren't the Justice League and can't just go help anyone in the streets who needs help, let alone the kid who is a former member of Haegwine. Kim explains that he is fine with helping actual decent people in the neighborhood, but it's different when it comes to delinquent runaways. Even Hong thinks that runaways in this neighborhood are dangerous and tells him about her experience when her runaway friends tried to sell her off to a bar in a red light district. But Daejin still believes that Inwon is a decent guy, even after everyone tells him not to get involved, so he decides to help Inwon without his runaway family's support. The next day, Daejin, along with Seong Ho and Inwon, locate the agent who commissioned the assault on Inwon's dad. The supposed agent, Hyun Yu, is a district delegate, so Daejin wonders why a decent person like him would place a commission on Inwon's dad. Daejin realizes that the man is not decent as he sees him going inside a bar. They also go inside as minors with the help of Inwon, who apparently carries multiple fake IDs with him. According to Inwon, it's a necessity to have a fake ID as a runaway, but Daejin doesn't recall any of his runaway family having a fake ID. The group looks for the room that Hyunji went to, while Hyungwoo enjoys himself with his own temporary harem. He tells all the girls to drink, but a newbie doesn't, so he slaps her and decides to give her a good beating. The newbie girl then comes out of the room crying, and Hyunju calls the manager, claiming that the girls in his bar don't know how to behave. Daejin and the others finally locate Hyunju, so they confront him directly and try to convince him to take back the commission. But Hyunju has no intentions to do so, so In Won tries to force him when the security guards come there. Seong Ho and In Won act like they are afraid and tell Daejin that they have never been in a real fight. So Daejin steps up and beats up the security guard boss to protect his friends. Seong Ho and In Won want to help Daejin fight the security, but Daejin tells them to quietly stay behind as he believes it's best for someone who knows how to fight to fight. One of the security guards tells their boss, Park, that the gate guards let these kids in after checking their fake IDs. Park gets furious when he learns that these kids are only minors. One of Park's subordinates realizes that Park might do something dangerous here and tells us that it's been only a year since he started working here. He has seen the vicious form of Park and what type of monster he is. He shows no mercy to minors either when it comes to money or fighting. And he hates minors. So now that Park just got punched by a minor, Daejun, the subordinate is sure that Park is going to destroy him. But Daejin is a trained fighter, so he goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of Park's subordinates and tries to get the upper hand by using dirty tricks like stepping on his feet. But Park steps in and kicks Daejin away before he can cause further trouble. He then pounds on Daejin and breaks a glass bottle to make a few holes in his face. But before Park can harm Daejin, Sinongwa steps in to help him, although he looks to be trembling in fear. Inwon also steps up to defend Daejin, so it's now a 3 versus 3 battle, but because Inwon and Sinongo have never been in a battle, Daejin tells him to just take on one guy, and he himself decides to fight two guys at once. Now that Daejin has a little less disadvantage, he finally manages to dodge some kicks thrown at him. Daejin realizes that even if he throws punches, he'll get no reaction if he doesn't hit a vital point. Daejin notices that Park and his subordinates are attacking him without any coordination, so he realizes that they are underestimating him just like Iltak did. So he waits for his chance until Park's subordinate leaves his guard open, and then he goes for an uppercut and knocks him out. Park is stunned to see how good Daejin is at fighting, so he commends him by delivering a deadly blow right in the gut. Park doesn't underestimate Daejin anymore and keeps his guard up to avoid any surprise attacks, so Daejin looks to hit another vital point by using a low kick, however Park predicts the attack and begins to underestimate Daejin again. That's when Daejin remembered the technique that he learned from Joe, Joe taught him to punch in the solar plexus, which is located right below the chest. Daejin plunges and delivers a similar attack to Park, punching his liver and making him gasp for air, all thanks to his lessons provided by Master Joe. Daejin then repeats his punches on all of Park's vital points and knocks him out completely. 
Then he turns around to see that Sinongho has knocked out the other security guard as well. So Daejin gets back to Hyeonyu to make him take back the commission. Park gets up again and reveals that he was once beaten up by miners before, just like this time. Apparently, he was beaten up by members of Haegwang, so he can't take the humiliation anymore and goes to stab Daejin when he is not looking. But Seongho notices the attack coming and jumps in front of Daejin, taking the hit. Daejin properly knocks out Park this time and notices that he is covered in blood. But it's not his, it's Song Ho's as he falls unconscious because of the loss of blood. In one stands there stunned, seeing the blood coming out of Song Ho. So Daejin snaps him back to reality and tells him to take Song Ho to the hospital immediately. As In one carries Song Ho away, Daejin blames Hyun Yu for this unexpected event. Daejin starts punching Hyun Yu because actions speak louder than words, which makes him reveal why he contracted a violent hit on Byeongchil, In one's father. A few hours later at the hospital, Seongho turns out to be fine, as he wasn't stabbed anywhere life-threatening. Daejin asks Seongho why he sacrificed himself to save him, and Seongho explains that he always felt alone, but now he felt like he finally had someone to care about. That's why his body just moved on its own. Seongho feels bad that he won't be able to follow Daejin and Inwon in their investigations anymore, and requests that Daejin help Inwon in his place. Seongho promises to get better soon, so Inwon smiles and tells him to join them as soon as he can. Then Daejin and Inwon go outside of the hospital, where Daejin thanks him for bringing Seongho here. Daejin wonders how Seongho's hospital bill was paid, so Inwon reveals that he used the money that he stole when he left Haegwang. Inwon thinks that it was the least he could do to repay Daejin and Seongho for helping him. So Daejin thanks him and tells him what happened back at the bar with Hyeonyu. Apparently, Daejin made Hyeonju reveal that In Won's father, Byeonchil, started to figure out that Hyeonju was siphoning money from the district council budget. Before Byeonchil could expose him, Hyeonju used Hatewine to warn him not to. Daejin tells him to cancel the commission, but he would have to meet Hatewine face to face if he wanted to cancel it. Going back to the present, Daejin believes that Hyeonju might instigate something with Hatewine if he goes alone. So he tells In Won to go with Hyun Yu to Hate Wang to make sure he cancels the commission. In Won doesn't want Daejin to get hurt like Song Ho did, so he wants to go alone. But Daejin is not going without helping In Won, and he forcefully tags along. In the meantime, Hangul Jo eavesdrops on Daejin and In Won's conversation and realizes that Daejin is about to make a dumb mistake. The next day, Hate Wang's executive, Jung Min, reveals that the security guards at the bar were his underlings. So he realizes Hangul Jo family are strong people and why Gangrak wants to use them. Jung Min checks on Park and sees that he has no fatal injuries. Therefore, he confirms to Gangrak that it is true that the members of Hangul Jo family are soft. But Hate Wang doesn't need a bunch of softies in their team, so Gangrak decides to get rid of Daejin instead and digs a six foot hole in the woods. Meanwhile, Daejin and Inwan go into the mountains with Hyun Yu to meet with people from Hate Wang. But on the way, Inwon gets suspicious of Hyun Yu because it is very likely that he is leading them into a trap. Hyun Yu denies Inwon's claims and promises to just cancel the request. Anyway, the three finally reach the secret base of Haegwang, and Daejin and Inwon stay behind to monitor Hyun Yu while hiding from Haegwang. Daejin sees that there are five gangsters from Haegwang here, so he believes he can take them if things go south. But as Gangrek comes with his shovel towards Hyun Yu, Daejin's idea of trying to beat the five guys from Hate Wang disappears in the blink of an eye. He begins to feel that he has just seen an enormous mountain peak and wants to get out of here as soon as he can. On the other hand, Gangrak learns from Hyun Yu that he wants to cancel his request. But if he wants to, he will have to pay the remaining balance, even though it will be a waste of money to keep his embezzlement a secret, Hyun Yu decides to pay it. But Gangrak tells Hyun Yu that he also knows about his embezzlement secret and threatens to reveal it to the public. Gangrak then tells Hyunju that he must pay him a part of what he embezzles if he wants him to keep his mouth shut. Hyunju explains that another party already knows about his embezzlement. So Gangrak promises to get rid of them. He promises Hyunju that from now on, if anyone learns about the embezzlement, they will all turn up missing, and that includes Inwan's father Byeonchil too. Gangrak also reveals that he knows that Daejin and Inwan are hiding in the corner so he decides to get rid of these two rats as well to keep the embezzlement a secret. Daejin wonders how Gangrek knew about them hiding, 
but little does he know that among the rats there is a mole. Gangrex's underlings surround Daejin and Inwan with their bikes, making them realize that they are completely screwed. Gangrek orders his underlings to bring Dajin to him, so all of the thugs rush at Dajin at once and begin beating him with steel pipes. Dajin sees that Inwan is already knocked out, and he realizes he can't win here. So he picks up a rock and throws it at one biker, making them fall to the ground. He repeats the same technique to make another biker fall, and he smashes them with a heavy kick. Dajin immediately runs in Hyanyu's direction, thinking he can't take him hostage to escape. But before he can reach him, Gangrek throws his shovel at him and tells him that he knows Daejin is from the Hangul Jo family. Gangrek recognizes Daejin as a good fighter, so he decides to take care of him himself. Daejin realizes that if Gangrek is as strong as Jung, his survival chance is zero. But he knows he can't act like a coward here because he needs to save In One. He believes he can at least hold against a guy of the same caliber as Jung, but what he doesn't know is that Gangrek is way stronger than Jung. Daejin realizes that with one punch, Gangrek sends him flying to a tree and destroys his left arm. Then Gangrek comes to end this by stomping on Daejin's head, but misses the hit as Daejin dashes away. Still, Gangrek's mishit hits Daejin's leg and causes a hairline fracture. Gangrek starts dragging Daejin by grabbing his hair and telling him that he must pay for what he did to Bianchiel at the bar and for Joe, leaving a burn mark on Jim's face. Gangrek apparently gets hurt every time he sees the burn mark on Jung's face, so he wants to do the same to Daejin so that Joe can feel how he feels. Gangrek then pushes Daejin's head towards a blazing fire. But Daejin can't give up yet, as he has more goals to achieve and needs to marry Nayeon. So he puts his hand inside the blazing fire and splatters the burning charcoal on Gangrek's face to escape his hold. Then he picks up the shovel to use it against Gangrek. But he should have known better that he stood no chance against him. Gangrak commends Daejin for showing how courageous he is and gives him a chance to survive if he joins Haegwang. To prove that Daejin is worthy to join Haegwang, Gangrak brings out an unconscious Park and tells Daejin to bury him alive. Gangrak tells Daejin that Park is a rat who betrayed Haegwang and siphoned money from their bar, so he deserves to die. Daejin, of course, isn't crazy enough to murder someone, but at the same time, he realizes that if he doesn't bury Park, he and his friend, Inwan, will die so Daejin closes his eyes to do it. But his kind heart doesn't let him commit such a crime, and he again takes the stand to fight against Gangrak. Gangrak knocks Daejin out, calling him a fool, and tells his underlings to bury Daejin alongside Park. After some time, Daejin regains consciousness to find out that he is almost fully buried but doesn't have the energy to even move anymore. He regrets not spending more time with his runaway family and mostly misses Joe. Joe hears his outcry, and comes there like Superman to rescue Daejin. After beating Gangrak's underlings, Joe digs out Daejin from his almost grave and asks him how it feels to be reborn. Daejin laughs as Joe is still unbothered and is making jokes. But it's not a happy ending for them as more of Gangrak's underlings come there to attack Joe. So Joe kisses the first underlying with his boots, knocking him out, and goes for the others as well. The thugs realize they are screwed after recognizing Joe and give up on fighting. After defeating the thugs, Joe and Daejin wake in one up, and he gets excited about meeting Joe in person. Daejin asks Joe how he found him here, and Joe reveals to him that he has learned that Daejin was doing dumb stuff when he eavesdropped on him earlier. So he followed Daejin secretly, like the protective older brother, but lost sight of him when trying to take care of a Haegwon member. That's why Joe took this time to come and save Daejin and in one. Daejin learns from Joe that both the executive and Hyanju are nowhere to be seen. So he turns to one of Gangrak's underlings to learn where he went. But he claims to have no idea about their whereabouts. Realizing that Gangrak is involved here, Joe thinks that things might get complicated. So he tells Gangrak's underling to tell Gangrak that he buried Daejin and never met Joe tonight. But the underling can't lie, so Joe forces him to lie with his charisma. Later, in one acts like a fanboy for Joe and clicks photos with him. He also gets an autograph from Joe, promising him that he will turn it into a tattoo. Daejin makes Inwan remember that he needs to save his dad instead of fanboying and tells Joe that the only way to do so is by defeating Gangrak. Joe thinks for a while and takes Daejin aside to tell him not to get involved with Gangrak anymore because, thanks to the underling, Gangrak thinks Daejin is dead. Joe then reveals that he can't hit Gangrak because if he does, it will no longer be personal. Instead, war between Hangul Joe family and the entire Hate Wang organization will break out, 
Also, Joe has his own personal reasons not to get involved with Gangrak and tells Dajin not to help the kid, Inwan, anymore. Dajin tells Joe that he wants to help Inwan just like Joe once helped him. So Joe tells Dajin to do whatever he wishes and walks away. The next morning, Dajin wonders how he is going to beat Gangrak out of all people. He can't even imagine landing a punch on Gangrak and realizes that there's no way of winning. Then Dajin wonders how Gangrak knew he was hiding there and knows that it was not Hyeonyu who told Gangrak since he was watching him the whole time. Sinongho calls Dajin, feeling concerned after learning from Inwan that he ran into big trouble. So he wants to come and help both Dajin and Inwan. Kim Tuck comes to the roof and asks Dajin who he is talking to. Dajin cuts the call immediately and lies about talking with just a friend. But Kim knows that Dajin is lying, as Joe has already told him everything. And he punches his already injured left hand. Kim tries to make Dajin understand that he stands no chance against an executive member of Haekwine. Kim then tells Dajin to defeat him first if he dreams of beating Gangrak. But he corrects himself, saying that he is not as strong as Gangrak, and tells Dajin that he must fight all members of the Hangul Joe family first before even thinking of fighting Gangrak. A flashback shows Joe and Kim Tak on the rooftop of their house after Joe rescued Dajin from his own grave. Joe tells Kim that Dajin plans to fight an executive member of Haekwine alone and asks him what he thinks about Dajin's idea. Both break into laughter at the same time, realizing how silly Dajin is, but Joe knows Dajin is serious, so he asks Kim to knock some sense into Dajin. That's why Kim and the entire runaway family are here to knock some sense into Dajin. Dajin tells Kim that there's no way he can beat him, Hong or Cha at Seongbin. So Kim asks Dajin how he intends to beat Gangrak if he can't even beat them. Dajin doesn't have an answer, so Kim tells him that if he doesn't have a plan, he must convince the runaway family with his skills. Because Dajin is still willing to fight Gangrak, it's normal for Kim to think that Dajin can fight them too. Hong doesn't wait for Dajin to answer and dashes towards him to knock some sense into him first. She begins punching him, but Dajin doesn't fight back as he can't hit a woman. So he puts his guard up and lets Hong hit him repeatedly. But then he realizes that he will die this way and won't get to beat Gangrak, so he uses the tackling technique that Hong taught him and uses it against her, since it's technically not the same as hitting her. But Dajin should have known better that he couldn't use a technique against his own creator. Hong delivers a reverse suplex on Dajin, showing her specialty in wrestling. After slamming Dajin on the ground, Hong tells him that he should be thankful she is quitting early because there are more people in line waiting to beat Daejin. After the runaway family gives Daejin a 30-minute break to regain his energy, Songbin steps up to beat him this time. Daejin didn't attack Hong last time because she was a girl, but this time he is determined to fight for real. He swings his fists at Songbin but doesn't manage to land a single hit as Songbin keeps swiftly moving away. Songbin then counters with his own jab and shows his specialty in boxing. He keeps punching Dajin on his vital points and making him go through insufferable pain. As the fight ends with Dajin losing, Seongbin tells him to give up on dreaming of defeating Gangrak. Still, Dajin doesn't give up and stands up again for the third fight with Kim Tak. Dajin believes he might have a chance to win this time as Tak's right hand is injured and dashes towards him. He punches Kim with all his might, but he doesn't even move a muscle. Kim tells Dajin that although he has gotten stronger, he is still weak by his standards. He kicks Dajin with a high kick, showing his specialty in kickboxing. Even though Dajin basically had a disadvantage, he still couldn't beat Kim. Still, Dajin doesn't give up and gets ready to fight the strongest one out of everyone, Dayak Cha. Cha uses his judo techniques to swing and slam Dajin on the ground and defeats him in mere seconds, making him realize that he stands no chance against any person in Hangul Jo family. Cha tells Dajin that he is being stupid and makes him understand that because of his stubbornness, he will get the entire runaway family into trouble. Dajin remembers when he also caused Hangul Jo family unnecessary trouble and almost got them murdered for doing something he couldn't handle. And Kim's hand is still injured because of it. Cha tells Dajin to promise him that he won't bring any danger to the runaway family again and makes him realize that he is acting recklessly. So Dajin decides to quit going after Gangrak for now and tells Cha that he wants to get strong again so that he can save Il Wan's dad like he saved Nanan from Dongma. He then requests that the runaway family teach him how to fight so that he alone can beat Gangrak. Kim realizes that Dajin has a strong resolve, so he decides to teach him so that he can fight Gangrak toe to toe. He also tells Dajin not to worry, as he promises that even if Joe isn't with the runaway family this time, 
they will come with Dajin when he fights Gangrak. Kim explains that the runaway family has always been determined to fight Gangrak from the start. A flashback shows Joe telling Kim that Gangrak is keeping a watch on them, so one day something will happen like it did against Jung. But Joe can't get involved with Gangrak himself for personal reasons. Because if he does, another mysterious identity will also get involved. So Joe tells Kim to take down Gangrak with the help of Hong, Seongbin, and Cha, and she was only testing Daejin to see his resolve. Now that Kim has confirmed that Daejin wants to be in it, he promises to make him strong enough so that he can hold his own against any executive member of Haegwang. Kim mentions one more thing that Hangul told him. Apparently, Haegwang already has someone on the inside with the runaway family, and according to Joe, Daejin is in the most danger because he has found out that one of Sinongho and Ilwan is a spy for Haegwang. While Kim takes the runaway family somewhere down the stairs, Daejin doesn't believe that either Inwan or Siongo is a spy. He can't imagine any of them betraying him and wonders why Joe would claim one of them to be a spy. As the runaway family reaches the place called the storage closet, Joe stands there and reveals a person inside who is a hate wine watcher. Joe tells Daejin that, thanks to this guy, he found out about the spy. Apparently, when Daejin and Joe came back from the hill last night, Joe found the situation very strange. After returning home, he discovered the Watcher, who was keeping an eye on his house, so Joe captured him and found out from him that Gangrak was after Hangul Joe family. The Watcher told Joe that he was told by Gangrak to keep an eye on Daejin after he came down from the hill. Joe finds it strange that Gangrak already knows Daejin is alive, even though he strictly told Gangrak's subordinate to report to him that Daejin is dead. So Joe called the punks that he beat on the hill and learned from them that they didn't reveal to Gangrak that Daejin was alive. Joe realized that Gangrak already knew even before they reported anything to him with the help of a spy. Joe concluded that among the people who knew Daejin survived the hill was a spy. Daejin starts to feel betrayed as he no longer can trust his new buddies and wonders who the spy is. Joe repeats the sentence that he once told Daejin and again reminds Daejin that he shouldn't just trust anyone out on the streets. Daejin suddenly gets a call from Inwan and sees that he has sent him multiple messages claiming that his father went missing and that he is with Songho. Knowing that Ilwan could be the spy, Sha tells Daejin to hang up the call, but Kim lets him take the call as there's a chance that Ilwan is not actually the spy. But Daejin hangs up the phone anyway, as he no longer wants to be a nade guy and decides to train first to fight against Gangrak, so that he can take his revenge for making a fool out of him. Meanwhile, Ilwan gets disappointed in Daejin as he is not answering, so Sinano pats him on the back to comfort him. Two days later, at Gangrak's hideout, Inwan's dad, Byongchiol, gets beaten by Gangrak's thugs to make him join Hindu on his crimes to steal money from the government. But Byongchiol is an innocent person and doesn't want to do anything illegal. So Gangrak personally comes to beat him and tortures him by suffocating him inside a tub of water. Gangrak then again tells Byongchiol that if he wants to live, he must side with Hyeonyu. Still, Byongchiol doesn't agree to do anything dirty. So Gangrek blackmails him by threatening to murder his son, Inwan, instead. Another hate Wang executive, Jongmin, tells Gangrek that he should be worried about Hangul Jo family. Jongmin gives a summary of Gangrek's failures and tells him that after Gangrek's plan to get Dajin on his side failed, he tried to murder him. But Jo sabotaged that plan too, so Gangrek told the spy to take care of the rest. But Dajin is ignoring the spy now and hiding in his home. Gangrek blames his plan's failure on Jo so Jongmin tells him to leave it to the other executives to destroy Hangul Jo family. Although their leader didn't agree to go against Hangul Jo, Jongmin thinks he doesn't need the leader's command and just wants to proceed with his plan. Right then, an underling of Jongmin reports to him about trouble outside their hideout. Apparently, the entire Hangul Jo family has barged their way inside the hideout and is on their way to fight the executives. Daejin is no longer the pushover that Hate Wang can fool with anymore and has come here to destroy them first before they can plot any other evil plots against the Hangul Jo family. Who do you think is the spy? Comment down below. After beating the guys on the first floor, the Hangul Jo runaway family proceeds to search for Gangrek, who is on the third floor of the building, although it won't be easy as there are dozens of Hate Wang members on each floor. But since it's the runaway family, they cruise through the enemies with ease. Most of the hate Wang members try to target the weakest member, Daejin but Cha and the others show that they have got his back. With their help, Daejin also gets the confidence to beat the enemies and begins to head towards the stairs with everyone else. At this point, the hate Wang members don't even bother fighting the Hangul Jo family, knowing that they are no match for them. 
so they open the way for everyone, but Che makes it clear that they aren't going anywhere without a fight and beats every henchman ruthlessly. On the other hand, Gangrak learns that Hangul Jo himself hasn't come with the runaway family, and that makes him believe that he has a chance to win against the runaway family. While climbing the stairs from the second floor, Kim sees that the path has been blocked and realizes that this was a trap set up by Hatewine to corner them. With no options left, Kim decides to just create a path by beating all the henchmen. Daejin also joins in on the frenzy and tries to punch a guy, but the guy runs away from him and comes back with weapons and more people as his backup. Kim realizes that these henchmen are only fighting strategically to buy Gangrak and the other Hatewine executives time. Gangrek reveals that he is only buying time to gather all the other executives of Hatewine to come here so that they can finish off the entire Hangul Jo family. He also sends his two subordinates to the second floor, who he believes can take down Cha and Kim. Looking at the two subordinates of Gangrek, Daejin realizes how strong they are. However, Cha doesn't realize who he is up against and blindly charges at the two subordinates of Gangrek, Lee, and Choi. Of course, Cha misses his attack completely and gets kicked by Choi. Thankfully for him, the underdog Daejin comes to his rescue and kicks right at the jaw of Choi. Even after getting kicked, Choi doesn't back down and charges towards the Hangul Jo family with his hate wang lackeys. He targets Daejin first, coming at him with a barge of attacks, but Daejin easily counters him and slams him down on the ground. Choi gets up again, as if he felt nothing, and begins to punch Daejin again with his brass knuckles. Kim notices how well Daejin is holding his own alongside Cha, Songbin, and Hong. Seeing them, he starts to believe that they can win against Gangrak without the help of Hangul Jo. So he lunges at Choi's teammate Lee to finish him off. Although Kim manages to smack Lee on the ground, he gets a cut on his arm because of Lee's knife. Lee realizes that he has wasted enough time already, so he gives up the fight and reveals to Kim that the only reason they are not properly fighting and only trying to keep the Hangul Jo family on the second floor is so that the other hate wang executives can come here and murder them themselves. After revealing this information, Lee quickly blocks the stairway, and as Kim approaches him, he stabs him with his knife. Kim, although aware of the fact that hate wang is trying to trap them in here, still wants to get to the third floor to get revenge on Gangrak. He tells the others to hurry up, as it's a fight against time. Daejin still fails to defeat Choi, so big brother Kim comes to his aid and tells him to run towards the stairway. While Hong and Sin Ong-bin stay behind to stop Lee and Choi, the others quickly head towards the stairs to get to the third floor. Knowing that Gangrek isn't going to go easy on Lee and Choi if they let the Hangul Jo family leave, Lee decides to just murder them all himself before they can reach the third floor. But Lee must go through Hong and Sin Ong first to be able to do so. On the other hand, Daejin, along with Cha and Kim, reach the third floor and goes in front of the room where Gangrek is supposedly hiding. As Daejin bluntly opens the door, Gangrek punches him in the face, sending him flying away. Gangrek's presence itself intimidates Cha and Kim, and just looking at his face makes both of them flinch. Gangrek tells Daejin that he has made a mistake by bringing his friends here, as he will die here with them. Gangrek reminds Daejin about the time he got his behind whipped on the hill. Daejin doesn't think that the outcome will be the same again, and claims that he has never lost a fight twice in a row. Thinking that Daejin has a big mouth, Gangrak decides to shut him up and comes to attack him. Cha stops Gangrak from going near Daejin and tries to flip him down on the ground, but Gangrak gets loose from his hold and punches Cha away. In the meantime, Daejin gets the chance to come near Gangrak, and seeing him, Cha holds Gangrak by his head to stop him from moving. With this team effort, Daejin manages to hit Gangrak with a heavy uppercut. Gangrak's partner Jung and tries to rescue him but gets stopped by Kim. After getting hit with several kicks from Kim, Jung Min acknowledges him as a fighter and wonders how someone with this much strength was beaten by Jung. Kim explains that he was weak back then, but after the fight, he and his family trained every day to make sure they didn't have to lose against Hate Wang anymore. However, Jung Min doesn't think Kim will win here today, claiming that he is as strong as Gangrak and taking off his suit to prove it by showing him tattoos. Kim still doesn't understand how this nerd can be stronger than him, so Jung Min makes him understand by beating the life out of him. Daejin notices how much Kim is getting beaten up, but he doesn't have any time to worry for him as he needs to beat Gangrak first. Even with Cha on his side, Daejin barely holds on against the mighty Gangrak, let alone using his secret technique that he learned to use against him. Jung Min tells Kim that the other hate wine will come here soon to make sure Jo doesn't come here and save everyone like every other time. 
Jongmin remembers about the two small fries, Hong and Seongbin, who are downstairs and doesn't think they would be any danger to Hate Wang either, considering they are even weaker than Cha and Kim. Jongmin even begins to pity Hong and Seongbin for struggling for no reason, as everyone here will die anyway. But Kim doesn't think the Hangul Jo family needs anyone's pity, and tells Jongmin not to look down on them. He also clears up the misunderstanding of Jongmin and tells him that it's not Cha or him who are the strongest after Jo, but Sinon Bin. What Kim said looks to be true as Song Bin destroys everyone on the second floor in seconds as he sees Hong struggling and turns on beast mode to teach Lee and Choi a lesson. Seong Bin dodges both Lee and Choi's consecutive attacks with ease and counters them with heavy blows. Choi desperately tries to corner Seong Bin in a narrow room, but he instead gets cornered and gets knocked out by Seong Bin in seconds. With Choi defeated, only Lee was left, who tried his best to get the upper hand using his knife. Seong Bin does his best to block his vital points but still gets stabbed in the waist with Lee's knife. As Seong Bin tries to get the knife out of his waist, Lee lunges at him with another knife to stab him correctly. On the other hand, Daejin and Chab begin to feel that they might lose the fight against Gangrak. Daejin remembers that when he was training to get strong enough to beat Gangrak, Jo came to him and taught him a new skill that might help him. So Daejin wants to use that skill now and tells Cha to buy him some time so that he can execute it on Gangrak. Cha blindly comes at Gangrak only to get beaten up, but still Daejin fails to execute his plan and gets kicked away by Gangrak. Daejin explains that he must get Gangrak on the ground first to execute his skill, but he can't even get close to him. Gangrak knocks out Cha completely and then slowly approaches Daejin to murder him next. But Che reveals that he only faked getting knocked out so that he could grab Gangrak's legs. Daejin uses this opportunity to grab Gangrak's head, kicking him in the face and making him fall to the ground. Now that Daejin is about to use the skill on Gangrak, he reveals that what Joe taught him is a jujitsu submission move that locks the joint, called the armbar move. Daejin successfully uses the submission move on Gangrak and begins to bend his right arm with the strength of his entire body. Gangrak tries to hold out, but according to Joe's instructions, no one should be able to hold out if the move is performed correctly. So Daejin proceeds to bend Gangrak's arm with all his strength and manages to break Gangrak's right arm. Cha and Kim think they finally might stand a chance, but Jongmin believes otherwise. He chuckles and tells Kim that Gangrak is an actual monster who wouldn't go down even if you broke all his arms and legs. Kim tries to go help Daejin, but Jongmin isn't just going to let his toy get away so easily. On the other hand, Gangrak begins to beat Daejin, even with his arm broken, and throws him all over the place. Daejin finds himself in a bathroom, where he sees In Wan's dad locked up and beaten up. He realizes that In Wan wasn't lying when he asked him to help him find his father, which means Seong Ho is the actual spy. Gangrak confirms it, but it no longer matters anyway as the spy's job is done and the Hangul Jo family is bound to die here. With his left hand, Gangrak begins to smash Daejin's head asking him if he knows no skills other than some petty tricks. He calls Daejin pathetic for falling into the trap of Sinong Ho and blames him for getting the Hangul Jo family involved in his problems. Gangrak dips Daejin's head inside the bathtub to suffocate him. As Daejin begins to lose consciousness, he wonders if only tough guys like Hate Wang, who are willing to do whatever it takes, can survive in this world. But he can't let Hate Wang do whatever they want, so as one last desperate attempt, Daejin goes for another armbar on Gangrak's left arm. He remains persistent in taking another arm of Gangrak, ignoring the fact that he needs oxygen to live and showing him who the tough guy is here. Meanwhile, on the second floor, Seongbin becomes the human shield of Han to protect her from Lee. Lee calls Seongbin a fool for trying to save the woman who can't even stand for herself. Seongbin doesn't like that comment at all and tries to fight back even with his wounds just to save Hong's honor. Seongbin comes at Lee harder and tells him to take back what he said about Hong. Lee realizes that he is about to lose at this rate, so he uses a dirty move and lunges at Hong to use her to his advantage. Seongbin again comes in front of Hong and takes the hit, which is exactly what he wanted. Lee asks Seongbin if he intends to die to save Hong's life and decides to just murder both right there. Seongbin recollects how much he wasted his life in the streets, harming himself out of depression and even almost hurting himself. But then Hangul Jo family took him in and gave him a second chance at life. That is why he is ready to sacrifice his own life to save his family and wouldn't think twice about doing it. On the other side, Kim fights against Jongmin and starts to run out of energy. 
So Jungmin uses that to his advantage and begins to attack Kim's injured arm to make it easier for him to give up. However, Kim remains persistent in surviving and kicks Jungmin away from him to take a breather. Jungmin thinks that's enough messing around, so he quickly finishes off Kim and proceeds to break Kim's injured arm. Seonbin comes to Kim's rescue and pushes Jungmin away, making him realize that all the henchmen on the second floor have been defeated. Sinongbin takes off his shirt and tells Kim to take a rest for now, saying it will be his turn now to take the stage. On the other side, Daejin uses the armbar submission technique on Gangrak's left arm while still underwater and tries his best to bend it. Gangrak fights back with his broken right arm and hits Daejin on the head, making him lose consciousness. But before Gangrak can end his life, Inwan's dad attracts Gangrak's attention by jumping towards him with the chair strapped to him. Although he gets beaten up for it, thanks to his interference, Daejin gets free from his near-death situation and tells Gangrak that he is not as tough as he looks. Jongmin tries to have small talk with Seongbin, but he cuts him off with an attack and takes on Jongmin with his full strength. As Jongmin begins to lose the upper hand, Kim joins in to increase their chance of winning, but he no longer possesses any energy to fight and becomes a liability to Seongbin. So he steps back to let Seongbin finish Jongmin himself. Jongmin again tries to have a small talk with Seongbin and reveals that they met each other when they were younger. Apparently, Jongmin found a kid named Seongbin lying in the streets and turned his life upside down. That's why Seongbin gets mad at Jongmin and decides to end everything right now and here. Inwan's dad opens his eyes to see Daejin fighting on par with Gangrak. Daejin realizes that Gangrak is only struggling because his left arm has also been injured because of the early submission technique and that makes Daejin think he can win against this hate wang executive if he uses everything he has learned in his training. Daejin jabs and kicks Gangrak and follows up with a slam. But because of their huge weight between them, Gangrak doesn't move at all from his original position and slams Daejin on the ground first. Still, Daejin doesn't give up and stands up again, only to get beaten up. Gangrak takes a crowbar and tells Heijin that coming after hate wang was his biggest mistake and now he is going to pay for it. Inwan's dad tries to stop Gangrak from murdering a kid, so Gangrak gets rid of him first. Then he slowly moves his crowbar towards Daejin, pounds his face several times with it, and then goes to beat Inwan's dad. Even at this dire moment, Daejin remembers apologizing to Joe for putting everyone in the Hangul Joe family in danger. But Joe didn't think Daejin needed to apologize because everyone in the runaway family would go ahead and help a person in need. Daejin steps up even in this dire moment to save Inwan's dad and attacks Gangrak's injured left arm, forcing him to let go of the crowbar. Then he hits Gangrak with a mighty punch, making him realize that he cannot look down on the Hangul Joe family. On the other hand, we get to see the backstory of Seongbin and how he is related to Hate Wang executive Jeonmin. When Seongbin was 10 years old, he was being raised in an orphanage. Although the orphanage was old, the director always took care of everyone, including Seongbin. He had good friends there who he considered brothers. But then one day he ran away from the orphanage because what he needed were his real parents. He sat in the streets as he had no other place to go, and that was when he met Jongmin, who was in the middle of murdering someone. Because Songbin saw everything and became a witness, Jongmin held him hostage and threatened the director of the orphanage for money. Despite her own hardships, the director paid the money, but Jongmin and his gang still murdered the director, and the orphanage was shut down. Another orphanage took in Seongbin, but he couldn't just stay there because of his hatred towards Jongmin and himself for meeting Jongmin. So he ran away again, wanting revenge, and went to Jongmin's office to murder him. Unfortunately, as a kid, Seongbin was no match against him, and so he got beaten up and tortured by Jongmin. Even after that, Seongbin didn't give up until he eventually did after realizing the strength difference between them. And now that he has once again met Jongmin, it is the perfect opportunity to get revenge for what he did to the orphanage. Jongmin is still as arrogant as ever and tells Seongbin that it was his fault that the director died back then. He changes his attack style, which is the same attack style that he used to defeat Kim. However, the attack style doesn't work on Seongbin, who is ready to use the strength of every cell in his body to exact his revenge. He knocks down Jongmin after landing several heavy blows, but Jongmin gets up again and takes off his shirt to show off. Both engage in a fight again and trade several blows at the same time. Kim realizes that Songbin might lose, but Che tells him not to intervene as he will only hold Songbin back. Songbin gradually loses his strength and takes a big hit to the face. 
That's when he remembers getting rescued at the lowest point of his life by Handel Joe. After giving him the free entry pass to Joe's runaway family, Joe told Sonbin not to lose anything, realizing that he had probably lost everything. That's why Sonbin doesn't want to lose his runaway family and is willing to fight until the end to protect his new home. With his newfound purpose, he punches Jongmin as hard as he can and knocks him out in a single blow. Daejin keeps hitting Gangrak with all his strength, with the only hope that he will win today. He recalls the feelings that have helped him win against monsters like Gangrak and kicks Gangrak on the head. Gangrak begins to hate the look on Daejin's face because that expression tells him that Daejin still believes in his runaway family. Gangrak feels jealous about it too, as he too used to belong to a runaway family once. Just like Daejin, he believed that they were a real family and did everything to protect them. But in the end, his own runaway family betrayed him, and that made him realize the cruelty of this world. After murdering his own runaway family, Gangrak then met a person who was just like him, the person who created Haegwang, and joined his crime group. After that, whenever Gangrak met a strong person, he either recruited them or murdered them. That's how he has survived in this world, thinking about only his own self, which is why he hates men like Daejin who care for others. He counters Daejin's attack, headbutts him to shake him off, and then tosses him away with his sheer strength. Daejin can't believe how much strength Gangrak still has left in him, so he resorts to fighting dirty this time. He spits at Gangrak to blind him, but little does he know, Gangrak is a master at street fighting and is familiar with all petty tricks. So Daejin's trick doesn't work on him. To teach Daejin a lesson, Gangrak kicks his arm and instantly breaks it, making their fight finally what he calls fair. Even with his left arm broken, Daejin clenches his fist hard and stands up with the resolve to win today. Gangrak hates the fact that Daejin has the same look that he had once when he used to protect his family. So he begins to pull his punches and asks Daejin why he is so loyal to the Hangul Joe family. Instead of answering, Daejin asks Gangrak if he has anyone close like family in Haegwang. In reply, Gangrak tells Daejin that he doesn't need family and is happy with using his subordinates only. Learning that Gangrak has no one to protect, Daejin becomes certain that he will be the one winning today. He quickly picks up a weapon and calls Gangrak unlucky for not having anyone he can call this family. When Daejin hit rock bottom in his life, Joe and the other members of his runaway family helped him get better and made him reliable to them. So even now, Daejin relies on his runaway family, so they hear his words and grab Gangrak from every side to help Daejin kick his ass. Daejin uses the help of his family to win against the lone wolf Gangrak. After knocking out Gangrak, everyone from the runaway family takes a breather as they are exhausted. Kim gets proud of Daejin's immense growth as a fighter and tells him that he is now strong enough to fight any monster like Gangrak on his own. Daejin feels glad that everything went well, but at the same time, he regrets not helping Inwon save his dad. Speaking of Inwon's dad, Daejin can't find him anywhere, so he asks Kim if he has seen any old man around here. Learning that nobody has seen him, Daejin goes to the second floor, asking Hong if she has seen an old man come through here. But even she hasn't seen anyone like that. So he goes to the first floor and learns from an injured henchman that other members of Haegwang have taken Inwan's dad to the basement to give him fair treatment for getting Gangrak in trouble. Like the silly guy that Daejin is, he runs to the basement alone, not thinking it could be a trap. Because he has no strength left in him, he trips over the stairs and rolls onto the floor. He stands up again for the sake of Inwan and limps to the basement parking lot. But there he doesn't find Inwan's dad and instead sees Songo standing beside a car. Daejin asks Song Ho what he is doing here, and in reply, Song Ho tells him that he came here to rescue In Wan's dad. Although it should be clear to Daejin that Song Ho is the spy set up by Gangrek, he decides to play along for now and asks Song Ho to look for In Wan's dad. Song Ho tries to lure Daejin into the corner, telling him that In Wan's dad might be hiding there. But Daejin realizes what he is trying to do, so he punches Song Ho away from him. Sinongo finally reveals that he is the spy and tells Daejin that Inwan's dad is now locked inside his car trunk. Daejin still can't believe that Sinongo has betrayed him, so he comes to attack him filled with rage. But Sinongo reveals himself to be quite a strong person, blocks Daejin's attack easily, and claims that he is another executive in Haegwang, just like Gangrak. Sinongo quickly shows the huge strength difference between them and smacks Daejin away. Sinongo gets impressed by Daejin's resolve, even in this injured state, and begins to pity him as he is going to die today with Inwan's dad. Daejin doesn't think he will be the one dying today, but before getting into the fight, 
He asks Song Ho where In Won is. Song Ho happily reveals that he found In Won quite annoying, so he murdered him and threw his dead boy somewhere around a hill. Hearing that, Daejin's entire body begins to tremble in rage, but even that doesn't help him stand a chance against the mighty Haekwang executive Song Ho. Song Ho tries to knock some sense into Daejin, but he still doesn't give up on fighting, even though his body has already given up on him. Daejin slowly senses the level of difference between him and Song Ho and realizes that he might have ended up losing even if he wasn't injured. Song Ho also confirms it and claims that he is much stronger than Gangrak. As he begins to torture Daejin in one, the guy who was supposed to be dead, comes to save Daejin. Both Daejin and Seon Go wonder how this guy returned from the dead and ask him for an explanation. in one explains that when Song Ho's underlings were about to bury him after beating him up, he surprised them with a knife that he had in his pocket and left from there alive thanks to that. in one asks Daejin why he ignored him all these days, but forgives him anyway as he figures out that Daejin is probably here to save his dad. in one thanks him for that and stands with him to fight Song Ho together. Sinanho gets upset seeing his two new brothers going against him and reminds them how much he sacrificed for them in the past. But Daejin knows that was all but a ploy to get his trust, so he doesn't waste any time chit-chatting and begins the fight. Even with the two fighting together, Sinanho destroys them easily. In a desperate attempt to win, Inwon brings out his knife, but even with that, he is no match against Sinanho. Daejin stands up again, saying he won't go down before rescuing Inwon's dad and fights as hard as he can. But no matter what he does, Seongho remains unscathed and tells Daejin to give up. But seeing Daejin's unshaken resolve, Seongho decides to break his arm. As he proceeds to do it, the overpowered gangster Handel Jo comes there and once again saves the day. Jo tells Daejin that he will later explain why he came here, and for now, come to deal with Seongho. Seongho gets curious after seeing Handel Jo in the flesh and wonders if he is as strong as people say in the streets. To test how strong Jo is, Son Ho attacks him but fails to land a single hit. Jo attacks him back, but he too fails to land a hit on Seong Ho. Seong Ho shows the strength of a true hate wang executive and tries to kick Jo in the face, but Jo blocks it and realizes that there is not that big of a difference in their strengths. As both seem to be par on par in strength, Hangul Jo increases his attack power, and that creates a strength gap between them. He begins to hit Sinong Ho with more power and makes him realize why people in the streets call Hangul Jo a true monster. After taking a few heavy blows, Sinong Ho realizes that he might die if he continues fighting with Jo, so he looks for a way to escape from this fight. And the best way to get out of this fight is to surrender, so Sinong Ho puts his hands up and gives up. He tells Jo that if he lets him go today, he will consider not waging war against the Hangul Jo family. Song Ho even promises not to tell the big boss of Hate Wang that he met Hangul Jo tonight if he lets him go. But Jo doesn't trust the Slay Fox, unlike that silly Daejin, and punches him away. He reveals to Song Ho that he has already met with the bosses of Hate Wang, and the war between Hate Wang and Hangul Jo has already begun. So he begins to pound on Song Ho until a mysterious biker comes out of nowhere and takes Song Ho out of there. The biker tells Song Ho that the big boss sent him here to save him, and hearing that, Song Ho feels relieved, although he regrets letting In Wan's dad live. After Song Ho gets out of sight, Daejin gets up and expresses his regrets for letting Song Ho go like that. Jo tells him not to be disappointed in himself, as he successfully took down two of Hate Wang's executives and most importantly, saved In Wan's dad. So after getting In Wan's dad out of the car, the Hangul Jo family slowly limps back to their home. In Wan begins to cry and thanks Daejin for saving his dad's life. Seeing his tears of happiness, Daejin finally feels peace and takes an oath to become even stronger to protect his runaway family in the future. Later that night, all the injured members of the Hangul Jo family discuss past events and talk about how much Daejin has improved as a fighter. Daejin moves the attention away from himself and asks Jo about the war he talked about with Song Ho. Jo explains that he didn't want to get involved in fighting with Haekwang, as that would wreak an all-out war, but he recently found out that Hate Wang planned on murdering everyone in the Hangul Jo family, whether he interfered or not, and that is why he came to Gangrak's hideout to join the fight. Kim wonders where Jo gets all this insider information from and asks him to tell them if he has any secrets related to Hate Wang. Although hesitant to answer, Jo finally reveals to them that Hate Wang was created by him. Jo tells them that two hours before Dajin and the gang broke into Gangrak's hideout, he went to a VIP bar, which is also a Hate Wang hideout, 
to meet with one of the big bosses of Heiguang, named Wan Cheng. Daejin stops Zhou from telling this backstory and asks him to elaborate more about him creating Heiguang. Zhou reveals that he created Heiguang with his friend Xin, who is now the current leader of the organization. Apparently, Xin wasn't a heartless criminal before, but when he started to become like his current self, Zhou severed his ties with him and left Heiguang. Zhou doesn't elaborate more, saying it's his private matter, and goes to sleep after telling everyone that Heiguang is going to come after them now. Cha considers moving away from this house, but Joe doesn't think acting like a coward suits the Hangul Joe family. He tells everyone not to worry as long as he is around and gives Daejin a mean look before going to sleep. The next day, Joe goes to the rooftop and brings out a photo of him with his friend Shin. Somewhere else, in front of a church, a charity-free breakfast meal event is held, where many runaway kids have gathered for a free meal. One of them, named Heigyun, basically demands a refill, and since the providers are complete pushovers, he gets his way with them. His friend Junso asks him if they should join Heigwang because eating free meals every day apparently stinks. Seeing that Heigyun is unaware of the name, Jinsu explains that Heigwang is an organization that commits crimes for money. Heigyun likes the idea of stabbing people and considers joining Heigwang, but the pushover from before overhears their conversation and tells them that instead of getting involved in crimes, they should live a proper life. He even offers both Heigen and Junso a job if they do not join Heigwang and tells them that if they help clean the church, he will give them money. The pushover then takes the two inside a room of the church and reveals that he is someone from Heigwang who wants to give the two a chance to join Heigwang. Daejin's bully Iltak also reveals to be there and shows Heigen the way to the test. The mysterious guy from Heigwang gives Heigen and Junso a knife and tells them to stab this random person to death if they want to join Heigwang. Both Junso and Heigen hesitantly take the knife and kill the random guy, and because of that, the mysterious man lets them join his organization. After that, the mysterious man learns from a subordinate about the incident that happened with Gangrek, so he calls every executive at a meeting to deal with the Hangul Zhou family and reveals that he is the leader of Heigwang, Yuzhong Shin. So this guy only volunteered at the church to use it as a medium to recruit Heigwang members. At the same time, in another room of the church, Hegwang affiliate church pastor Jang Yeon forcefully kidnaps two runaway girls and tells them to do what the madame at the bar tells them to from now on. If they work at the bar, Jang Yeon promises to give them a place to eat and sleep, and even shouts at them to scare them into doing so. Hearing the girls crying and screaming, a guy named Yeon Hak comes there to scare them even more and slaps one of the girls to make her stop whining. After beating her unconscious, the other girl begs Yun Hak to stop and agrees to go work at the bar. After handling the situation for Jang Yeon, Yun Hak goes to the meeting room to meet with other Hate Wang executives and the leader, Shin. A female executive named Aram tells Yun Hak that Shin has gathered everyone here today to deal with Hangul Joe family because they have taken down three Hate Wang executives. Another executive named Wang Yak tells Shin that they should have just taken care of the Hangul Joe family before they did any damage to Heigwang. But another Heigwang disagrees and tells Wang Yak that they cannot just go fight Hangul Joe family because Joe cannot be messed with so easily. Before the executives get into an argument themselves, Shin breaks his silence and tells everyone that Joe most probably got involved because he has a plan backing him. So Heigwang must also take the following steps carefully. A week later, the Hangul Joe family goes to the pizza place together and eats there. It's In Wan who is giving them the treat and is currently working there as a replacement for Songo. Seong then asks Sha if they should be worried about Heigwang, and in reply, Sha tells him not to worry as they can beat them like every other time. While everyone else is carefree, Joe is rather serious and tense. After eating at the pizza place, the runaway family decides to take a photo together, and seeing the photo, Joe's tensed heart finally gets relieved. Later at night, Joe walks aimlessly in the streets and smokes a cigarette. Kim finds him smoking and asks him what is bothering him that he is smoking after so long. What Joe doesn't tell Kim is that when he met Wan Chang, a senior executive of Heigwang, he revealed that someone took a hit out on Daejin. And that's not all the bad news. While every executive wants to murder everyone in the Hangul Joe family, Joe's old friend Shin has made a special request, which is that if the Hangul Joe family gives up Daejin, no one will mess with them. So Wan Ching gives Zhou a choice, give up Daejin or lose everything that matters to him. Zhou is now considering what he should do, yet he doesn't tell Kim anything and tells him not to worry. 
Joe knows that the others will side with Daejin if they hear about the offer that Hate Wang has made, but he is not a softy like the others, so he finds the only way that would hurt no one else and rips off a part of their family photo. Daejin's ancient bully, Doyin, comes to the church, which is officially Hate Wang's main hideout, to confront Iltak for not murdering Daejin yet. Iltak explains that murdering someone is not that simple, especially when they are a member of the Hangul Joe family. But Doyin doesn't care about that, as he cannot stand the fact that the person responsible for making him almost permanently injured is still alive. So he decides to meet with Hate Wang's leader, Shin, thinking that he can easily murder Daejin. Wang Chang stops Doyin from taking another step forward and assures him that if he remains patient, Daejin will get murdered. Joe goes to the abandoned construction building where he first met Daejin and rescues him from the thugs of Doyin. Joe laughs, remembering how weak Daejin was back then, and at the same time regrets helping Daejin and bringing him home. The next morning, Joe doesn't help with the chores as usual and casually asks Hong what their family would be like without Daejin. Hong doesn't take the question seriously and tells Joe to stop asking weird questions. Meanwhile, inside the house, Chess scolds Daejin for not doing the dishes and tells him to start doing things right since he has now become a veteran member of the family. Joe stops Sha from scolding Daejin and offers to do the dishes instead, which shocks everyone in the house. Later that evening, Han brings in a lot of BBQ to cheer Joe up after seeing him upset these past few days. But Joe doesn't show up, so everyone else begins eating without him. Han mentions how Joe has been treating Daejin in a nice way, as if he were guilty of something. Kim also remembers his weird interaction with Joe and begins to worry for him. But Che tells him and everyone else not to worry, as their leader has always behaved this way and is probably sleeping somewhere. But Joe isn't sleeping and is on his way to the church to meet with his old friend, Shin. Joe remembers how he started Hate Wang five years ago with Shin and regrets every single part of it. Wan Cheng welcomes Joe to the church and asks him if he has come to a decision. At the same time, Daejin finds the ripped off family photo and sees that it's Joe himself. So Joe intends to sacrifice himself to save everyone else in his family, and he tells Wan Chang to bring Shin to him for one last fight. Daejin shows the ripped photo to the others, and they conclude that the photo has something to do with the fact that Joe isn't coming home. Although Cha thinks Joe probably ripped the picture because he didn't like how he looked in it, Kim doesn't think that is the case. He explains that he has noticed how strange Joe has been acting recently, even though he doesn't think Joe would do something reckless. On the other side, Wan Chang doesn't let Joe meet Shin directly and first gives him a proper welcome by making him fight with Hate Wang's executives and henchmen. Joe flies past the henchmen and takes out one of the executives first. He quickly makes his way past the Hate Wang members and begins fighting directly against second in command Wan Chang. Everyone else attacks Joe alongside Wan Chang, but no matter what they do, they fail to stand a chance against the reckoning. Four more executives of Hate Wang, including Song Ho, come to help Wan Chang beat Joe, but they know that wouldn't be enough, so the leader of Hate Wang Shin steps up to do the job and greets him. Shin calls Joe a fool for coming here alone and tells him that his silly choice will end up getting everyone he cares for murdered. Joe reminisces about the old days and asks Shin why he turned this way, but instead of answering, Shin tells the executives to go ahead and murder Joe. Incredibly enough, Joe holds his own against all the executives, but loses focus after wondering why his friend Shin became so evil. After taking a beating from Wang Yeok, Joe gets up and decides to be the one to stop his old friend Shin. He takes out Wang Yeok in a matter of seconds and tells Shin that he will murder him today if that is what it takes to stop him. Daejin goes to a children's park at night, thinking Joe might be sleeping here, and goes to all the other places where he usually goes to take a nap. But after failing to find Joe anywhere, Daejin wonders where Joe went. He sees a brick on the road and remembers the time when Joe taught him to fight in the streets. Daejin stops worrying for Joe as he is the strongest out there and begins to enjoy the fresh air when suddenly he hears someone screaming in the distance. On the other side, Joe defeats an executive and creates fear in everyone in Haegwang. But Shin doesn't think that would simply be enough and tells Joe to stop looking down on Haegwang. Shin claims that his dogs here are loyal to him and to prove it, he tells Wang Yeok, who is completely knocked out, to get up on his feet. Surprisingly, Wang Yeok does get up on his feet, defying his injuries and shocks Joe completely, as he was sure he completely knocked him out. The other henchmen of Hate Wang also get up on their feet as if they are more scared of Shin and getting beaten up by Joe. This time, Joe feels that everyone is really trying to create him, 
and that makes him wonder what type of monster Shin has become for him to create such loyal henchmen. Joe remembers that when he was young, he and Shin used to be carefree and have loads of fun together as brothers. So he wonders why Shin has changed so much and turned into this evil being. On the other hand, Daejin sees Jan Yeon chasing the girl he kidnapped earlier outside the church. Being the good guy he is, Daejin goes to help the girl even though he messed up badly when he helped someone last time. He cunningly trips Jan Yeon over so that he doesn't get the blame for helping the girl. But the other henchmen from Hatewine capture the girl in the meantime, and that gives Daejin no other choice but to get involved. But before he can do anything, Hatewine's executive, Yun Hak, tells Daejin to not bother them. Yun Hak asks Jang Yeon how the girl escaped, and Jang Yeon explains that she took her chance when everyone else in Hatewine was busy dealing with Jo. Hearing that, Daejin holds Yun Hak's shoulder and asks him if he knows Jo's whereabouts. Meanwhile, Jo is busy fighting the executives, and every time he beats them up, they just get back up on their feet because of Shin. While Jo is busy dealing with an executive, the newest recruit, Hagen, stabs Jo on the thighs and makes him fall on his knees. Jo beats him up and asks Shin why he is making kids like Hagen do something like this, ruining their lives. Shin tells Jo that when he left Hagen, the organization began committing heinous crimes without any hesitation. And because of that, Shin began to generate hundreds of thousands of dollars. So Shin thanks Jo for leaving the organization and laughs like a maniac. He asks Jo if he remembers the time when Jo saved him when he got beaten up at this very church five years ago. Shin thinks if Jo hadn't saved him that day and let him die, Hagwine would never have been created. Five years ago, Shin always came to this church to pray to God because his life was a living hell. The God answered his prayers and sent Hangul Jo to him as his savior, and Jo beat up the bullies who were about to murder Shin. After beating those guys up, Jo offered Shin some food and even let him stay at his place. Shin thinks it's all because of Joe that he has become like this. Joe regrets sending Shin to the old man five years ago. Hearing the name, Shin tells Joe that he is going to send him to the mysterious old man today, meaning that the old man is dead. Hearing that, Joe gets enraged and charges at him to shut him up. But midway, Joe's stab thigh forces him to stop moving, and Siongo uses this opportunity to beat him up. Another executive grabs Joe's arms to hold him down, and thanks to that, Sinongo begins to kick Joe in the gut repeatedly. Joe remembers why he came to this church today, and it was to finish what started because of him. Joe gets away from the executive and clenches his teeth with the resolve to murder Shin today. Shin gives everyone the order to murder Joe, so Joe has no option left but to run away for now. He uses anything in his path to reduce the vast number of enemies and slowly knocks most of them out. But no matter what he does, even the knocked out henchmen get up on their feet again and finally corner him. Joe realizes that at this rate, he will fail to even reach Shin, let alone fight him. He enters a room to escape from Hatewine members and finds a girl inside who is almost beaten half to death. He tells a girl that he will rescue her, but that doesn't seem likely to happen as Shin enters the room to murder Joe. Seeing Shin, the girl begs him to let her go, but instead of doing that, Shin stabs her in the stomach and asks Joe if this incident reminds him of the day when he failed to help many other kids like her. As the girl screams in pain, Joe remembers the time he failed to save another kid like her. So he forgets his plan to murder Shin today and instead looks for a way to save her and escape. On the other side, Yun Hak begins to punch Daejin just because he held his shoulder. But Daejin is no longer a loser and blocks all of Yun Hak's attacks. So Yun Hak gives him a chance to talk and asks him why he is curious about Hangul Joe. Once he hears that Daejin is a part of the Hangul Joe family, Yun Hak tells him that Joe is about to die today at the hands of Hagwine. After hearing everything from Yun Hak, Daejin tells Yun Hak to move away from him as he needs to go and save Joe and makes it clear to him that he is not the guy to be messed with. Realizing that Joe went to Hagwine's base to sacrifice himself, Daejin wonders why he would do something so reckless. Daejin knows that he must save Joe today as he still hasn't paid him back for everything he has done for him. On the other side, Joe fights with all he has and Shin figures out that Joe intends to save the girl. Shin asks Joe if he wants to be a cat mommy who takes care of all the stray cats, just like the old man, and calls him a moron for having such morals. To destroy Joe's sense of justice, Shin asks his subordinates to ignore Joe and murder the girl first. At that moment, Joe remembers how lonely he felt ever since he was born. His parents abandoned him when he was five, so he grew up in an orphanage. Because he was an orphan, he eventually became a target for the bullies at his school. Since no one was on his side, including the teacher, 
Joe took the responsibility in his own hands and got rid of his bullies himself. Because he beat up his bullies, Joe got expelled from his school for that. Soon after, he became a runaway and got into fights while living on the streets. Joe thought he could live alone without anyone's help, but seeing other kids with their families made him jealous. Then he met the old man named Tabium, who changed Joe's lifestyle and offered him to live with him in his house. Just like Joe, Tabium also took in many other kids who had no other places to go and gave them another chance to enjoy life. At first, Joe didn't like the warmth of his new family, so he didn't stay at the old man's house and went back to living on the streets. Eventually, he messed with the local gang's leader, Daesinon, who told him to join his crime gang. Joe wasn't that twisted that he would join a crime group, so he instead told Daesinon to just murder him. But before Daesinon could murder Joe, the old man Tabium came there to rescue Joe and got beaten up for it. Joe realized that the old man really cared for him, and seeing him cry for him made him feel like he was not alone in this world. So he returned to living with the old man and even began considering him his dad. Things were no longer lonely or hard for Joe, all thanks to the old man, Tabium. So now Joe wants to be the same hero as his runaway dad and wants to save the helpless girl from Hagwine. Shin tells Joe that being soft is dangerous in the streets, but since Joe is Tabium's son, he can't help but be soft like his father. Joe keeps mentioning the old man and because of that, Shin gets mad and tells everyone to murder Joe in under five minutes if they want to live. Joe fails to take everyone on alone and soon reaches his limits. Thankfully, Daejin comes there to save the day, turns off the lights to blind everyone, and tells Joe to run away with him. A few minutes earlier, when Daejin was still fighting Yunhak, he struggled to even land a punch on him. Daejin knew that he couldn't afford to waste a single moment here since Hangul was in danger. So he threw some dirt in Yunhak's eyes to throw him off and used that opportunity to run away from them. And in the meantime, he even rescued the girl. After taking the girl somewhere safe, Daejin learned from her that her friend was being held hostage by Hatewine in the church. So Daejin quickly rushed there and saw that Joe was trying to protect the girl who was being held hostage. To save both Joe and the girl from Hatewine, Daejin turned all of the lights off, and that's how he is now here. Even when the lights are out, Shin sees Daejin clearly and wonders what he is doing here. Seeing Daejin here, Joe remembers how much Shin too resembled Daejin five years ago. Although he was a loser, he never gave up, just like Daejin. That's why Joe came to help him and get rid of his bullies. Just like Joe's runaway father, Joe offered Shin to stay with him in his house and introduced him to the old man, Tabium. Shin quickly got along with the other foster children and became best friends with Joe in no time since they were in the same age group. When Joe thought everything would be peaceful, Shin told him that he wanted to take revenge on his bullies and asked him to teach him how to fight again, just like Daejin. After learning to fight from Joe, Shin succeeded in his revenge not too long after, but he didn't stop there and became a monster who enjoyed fighting for no reason. He formed a group of fighters like him and started taking commissions to beat random people. That was when he became more violent and even picked up a fight with the local gang leader, Daesung. So the old man stepped in, telling Shin to change his ways. But Shin didn't listen and because of that, Daesung ended up burning the old man's house as an act of revenge which ended up murdering the old man along with the other foster children, except Joe and Shin. Even at his dying breath, the old man told Joe not to seek revenge and live a peaceful life. With the old man gone and the other brothers gone, Joe once again lost his family and all his will to live. That's when Shin suggested that he take care of runaway children like the old man, and so they took over what the old man did and created Hagwang. Hatewang's main purpose was to take care of runaways and make sure what happened to the old man didn't happen to others. Until one day, Joe found out that it was Shin who contacted Daejeon to burn the old man's store alongside him and the other children. Joe begged Shin to explain why he did something so inhumane, and when he learned that it was for something as trivial as money, he couldn't bear to see Shin's face any longer. Joe tried to murder Shin, but even his own subordinates of Hakewang went against him and revealed that they only truly followed Shin and committed many crimes behind his back. Joe realized that he was only being used by Shin, so he left Hakewang. Because Joe saw how cruel people are in this world, he doesn't want Daejin to see that, so he tells Daejin to run away with the injured girl from here. However, Daejin tells Joe that he isn't living here to die alone, but Joe makes it clear to him that he must go save the dying girl. Trusting him, Daejin leaves with the girl while Joe distracts the others. He realizes that he might die today, 
so he hopes that Daejin doesn't end up becoming someone like Shin and sends his goodbyes to him. Daejin quickly runs away from the church with the goal of going to the hospital to save the girl's life, and she plans to call the Hangul Jo family to help Jo out afterwards. In the meantime, Jo does whatever he can to hold Hate Wang's henchmen, and seeing his fighting style, Shin recollects the time when he and Jo took down most of the gangsters on their own when they were just kids. However, Shin doesn't think that it's all thanks to Jo that Hate Wang came this far, and he only gives himself credit for making this notorious organization what it is today. Realizing the fact that Jo cannot be beaten barehandedly, the executives pick up weapons and strike him at once from all sides. As Jo gets wounded by the executive, Shin takes pride in giving himself credit for gathering these strong people as his underlings. Jo asks Shin why his mental health is so crappy and when the first time he planned to create this notorious organization was. Shin tells Jo that at first he just wanted his revenge, which is why he learned to fight from Jo. But soon after, when he noticed that his fists were enough to make people wince, he felt something strange in him. He felt strong, and because of the feeling of pure bliss, he wanted to become even stronger and gathered strong runaways off the streets to defeat every single enemy in his path. But the only obstacle that came in his path to becoming stronger was the old man, and that's why he decided to get rid of him and use the local gang to murder him. After murdering the old man, Shin tricked Joe into joining Hate Wang to take over the local gang destined on for himself, and thanks to that, his own gang grew even stronger. Even now, Shin wants Hate Wang to grow stronger, so he is using the church as a medium to gather young and strong runaways for his organization. Shin believes that his organization will become the biggest in South Korea, and the only obstacle stopping its growth now is the Hangul Jo family. That is why he intends to get rid of Jo, and he makes the executives corner Jo into a room and block the entrance so that he cannot get out. But Jo doesn't give up and throws everything around him at the executives, thankfully managing to snatch away a knife from one. Using that knife, Joe slashes everyone who comes in front of him, but soon he runs out of energy. Joe calls Shin a coward for hiding behind his underlings and asks him if he is scared because he knows he cannot beat Joe in a one versus one fight. To prove that he is not weak, Shin does step forward to fight Joe alone and tells him that he will murder him with his own hands. Joe lights up a cigarette and tells Shin that he doesn't care if he dies today as he intends to die with Shin. Joe then throws the lit up cigarette on the floor and instantly the ground begins to burn in flames. Joe reveals that when he threw everything at the executives, he deliberately kicked over a gas tank so that he could burn everyone along with him. After Joe's runaway dad died, he never wanted to play with fire again and quit smoking. But now he must finish what Shin has started and tell Shin that he will be taking him down with hate wine today. The hate wine members try to put out the fire, but the flames have already become too strong to contain. Some of them go to grab more extinguishers, but Wan Ching murders them before they can do so as he doesn't want the fire to be put out. On the other hand, Zhou again sees a flashback from five years ago when Shin was settling into the old man's family and he and Zhou went out to eat at a cafe. There, Shin thanked Zhou for saving him at the church and asked him for the first time to teach him how to fight. Shin explained to him that he wants to get revenge on his bullies, so as a loyal friend, Zhou decided to help him out. But because of that decision, Joe now must murder his old friend. Shin takes off his jacket and claims that he is now stronger than Joe, so there is no way he can beat him even in a one versus one fight. Joe isn't so sure about that, so he wants to see how much Shin has grown as a fighter. They both pick up their knives and dash at each other with the intention of murdering. They both trade slashes like they once did when they spar against each other as kids. But this time, Shin gets the upper hand on Joe and knocks the knife out of his hand. Joe tackles him to make his knife fall out of his hand too, and he gets in the mount position to punch him. But Shin kicks him away. They both jump to grab the knife and hold each side together. But because Shin has more strength than him now, he manages to stab right above Joe's heart. Joe realizes that his old friend is no longer worth saving, so even at his dying moment, he shoves Shin's face into the burning flames to burn the monster that has created the monstrous organization Hagwine which is responsible for destroying hundreds of innocent people's lives. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see the next part, comment below.